Hey guys, this is parts 1 to 10. It is timestamp, and without further ado, enjoy the video. We seem to be out of school, and it says, Students, after three years of study, you have now learned and mastered the theoretical knowledge of the profession system. And it is a beautiful day and the light is shining through on the school. We then see a star with crystals floating around it. And the professor says, Today is the day your profession is chosen and the day that will determine your fates. And this guy looks pretty cool. And his name is Lu Yun, the principal of Zihai First Academy. And I like how he's rocking a turtleneck. He also says that he will spare them the pleasantries and he will hope that all of them can reach the same level as a senior, Su Shin Shing, and become a pillar of the human race. And we find out that this guy who is shrouded in mystery is a level 80 holy mage, and all of the people look very intimidated. But of course, there is a guy with his hand in his pockets, and he says that that is a transmutation circle. His name is Lin Mo Yu, and he is a student of Ji Hai First Academy. His name is Lin Mo Yu, and he has been reborn into this world for so many years, and at long last, he can finally get his profession. We then find out that this world is unlike any other RPG game, and there are not only many dungeons and secret areas, but also monsters in the wild. So it seems like this is an MMORPG. He also mentions that after the profession selection, these individuals can gain experience by killing monsters and raiding dungeons as well as secret areas, and they can level up and enhance their skills as well as their strength, as we see an example right here. He also mentions that countless sages of the human race have carved out a living space for the human among the countless monsters, and that's how they have a stable society today, which kind of makes sense. And of course, the most popular professions in this world are naturally the combat classes. The support classes come next, followed by the livelihood professions. And the combat and support classes can be divided into five classes, or should I say five ranks. It is a low rank, the medium rank, the high rank, the rare rank, and of course, our favorite, the legendary rank. He also says that the entire sea high city may not even be able to produce a legendary occupation in more than 10 years. We then see the transmutation circle activate and a beaming bright yellow light comes out of it. His friend Gao Yang says, Yo Mo Yu bro, what is your most desired profession? As he puts his hand on his shoulder. He tells him to really say it because he really wants to be a knight. And he says that he will be a knight for sure so he can protect the girls. Are you kidding me? We already found our next simp. He then says, Gao Yang, why are you talking to that idiot? He won't answer you. And then he says that maybe today, his profession selection will be from the livelihood class. And then the other guy says that's right. It's just that his grades are a little bit better. So what about it? But of course, Gao Yang is pretty cool and is a cool dude and he says, don't say that. In fact, he doesn't talk simply because he does not like to. We then see Lu Yun, the principal, talk to Master Zhang and he says, I'm sorry to bother you today. And he is a level 52 formation master. He smiles and says it's no big deal. Our MC then says that old man is actually an arrangement master. And he says that it's a rare supporting profession. The president then says once I announce your name, enter the transmutation circle. The first one is Shu Da. Shu Da then gets his test. And he is in the livelihood class, uh, disappointingly. And he is a farmer. Well, and he says, I can't believe it. A livelihood class and a farmer at that. And I know that the rest of the class are probably laughing. He says that farming can be good though, because it can be upgraded into a grand farmer and even a an holy farmer. But the classmates say that indeed, among the livelihood classes, being a farmer isn't too bad. We see somebody and he becomes a chef. And his father was a chef. And he never thought that he could be a chef as well. This seems pretty wholesome. The president then says, yeah, until now, there hasn't been a rare profession. And then, of course, Sam Xian, the formation master, says that the students this year are quite average. The principal then says there are only one or two rare professions in the entire city of Xihai every year, so it's not too much for them to hope for. And then, Zhang Xian asks, how many years has it been since your academy came up with a rare profession? It would be nice to have at least one 
high level profession come from the combat class. Next up is Xia Xue. Xia Xue is a student of the Zhihai First Academy, and of course, I know that the boys are already fiending over her. She says, Lin Mo Yu, I'll show you who the real genius is, and it seems that this is the first waifu of her boy that he has collected. We then see, although we were known as the two geniuses of the academy, our boy Lin Mo Yu was always ahead of her, and she won't admit defeat. The guy then says that this girl has a lot of potential, and then the principal says, Master Zhang, why do you say that? He says that the girl's mental strength is more than twice of an ordinary person, and it's a high possibility that she could actually become a mage, because that is also a high-level profession in the combat class. He says that if it's some special mage, then this is truly a rare profession. And then we see her walk towards the circle. Boom. Some explosion happens. And then we find out that a vision has appeared. And it is indeed a rare profession. Her combat class is an elemental mage. Let's go, guys. I mean, sorry, I, I should be cheering for our MC and not his wife. But anyways, we then find out that the class says that this is amazing because it is actually so rare for this to actually occur, and of course, they say it's expected of a genius. Zhang Shan then says, Girl, you are very good, and she bows down and says thank you for your compliment. She looks over to her girlfriends, and they say that this is time she is sure to be able to surpass that annoying guy, Lin Mo Yu. And then she says, Lin Mo Yu, because he is next up, and with his hands in his pockets, he dashes past her. And I already know that our boy is probably going to be the most OP in the city. We then see the president or the principal. And he says, Master Shang, what do you think of this little guy? And he says, apart from looking very calm, there really isn't anything special. The principal laughs and says, there are two geniuses in our school. Ji Shui is the second and Lin Mo Yu is the first. And then he says, you should know that academic performance and class change are not necessarily linked. And the principal says, but if Lin Mo Yu had another rare profession, boom, holy cow, we see a purple spiral gather around him, and it literally connects the clouds, and it's a Nimbus cloud. There is lightning literally from his aura. The president of the principal looks up, and he's like, what the heck is going on here? Zhang Xin says, it is a vision. This transformation, vision? He says it is such a huge vision, and he wonders if this is going to be a rare profession. And then, of course, Joshua is like, there's no way, I won't lose to you, because the vision is much bigger than hers. One of the guy points up and says, look, there's dark movements in the clouds, and we see a lot of eyes that are glowing in the darkness. It seems to be the undead, and one of them falls and says, it's the freaking undead, dude, the dark clouds are full of undead. And they are literally marching down. And they seem to be very furious. Joshua then says, I know that this is a vision. But she cannot even fight that kind of stuff. And then we see our boy. And there are souls surrounding him. And he seems to be harnessing the power of the vision. We then find out. He is a necromancer. The unique hidden profession. See the green flame in his hands. And he says that he is the only necromancer in the world. And he also says that unless he dies, there will never be another profession like his. And he seems to be holding the world by the palm of his hands. This is not only rarer than a rare profession, but even rarer than a legendary profession. One of the guys says, Lin Mo Yu is so powerful that he transformed into a hidden profession, and it's a unique one. And they are two haters, and they're like, hmm, hidden professions aren't always powerful, and there have been many people in history whose hidden professions weren't very good. One guy also says that yes, I agree, and the girls say, just now the visions weren't scary, right? It was that of a necromancer. So does it have to be dealing with dead people all the time? And because he also doesn't talk, the guy says, isn't it good to deal with dead people because there really is no need to talk? And then Lin Mo Yu just says in his head while the other people are gossiping that the uniqueness of this profession is way better than he expected. Then, Zhang Xian then walks up to him and says, Young man, wait a minute. He replies, saying, Senior, how may I be of service? He then says, I have never seen your unique profession. Can you please demonstrate your skills? And then he says, please wait a moment. 
We then see his stats window. His level is 1 and he is a necromancer. Everything else is at 10 except for his spirit. It is at level 20. We then see Summon Skeleton Warrior level 1. He is able to summon a Black Iron level Skeleton Warrior. It goes from Black Iron to Bronze to Silver, Gold, Diamond, Legendary. And I didn't expect this, but Divine. He also has a Soul Blaze level 1, which he can burn the target's soul and deal burning damage. And it depends on his spiritual power and skill level. He has a flame in his hand and he says that his spiritual power is stronger, which means that the necromancers belong to the mage profession, but the skill of the summoning skeleton warriors are that of the summoning class. He says, summon skeleton warrior, and he loses 10 spirit points. We then see the black iron skeleton warrior. Everything is at 15, but he has no skills. They are like, this time it's for real, and they're like, whoa, there's no way that this is actually happening. We also find out that a skeleton warrior was attacked, and it asks if he wants to counteract it. And if he doesn't make a choice within 10 seconds, it will automatically attack him. And then he says, stay put. And then Zhang Xin is like very vigilant. The guy says, I'm a level 52 professional, and this Lin Lo Yu is only level 1. But if the summon is hostile to me, he also mentions that the attributes of the skeleton warrior are average, because Lin Mo Yu is only level 1. So it's really hard to see the strength of the profession. But he says maybe, after becoming a high level, the skeleton will become more powerful. And this skeleton looks pretty scary to me. The guy says, thanks a lot and good effort. And I hope your future will make a difference. He then walks away as others look at him. And of course, the skeleton is walking with him. And Gao Yang is like, yo, can I touch it? And then he says, is this skeleton powerful? I don't believe it. It looks like a rag. And of course, our boy Mo Yu responds saying, it should be better than you. He calls a skeleton back into his system, and then it is Gao Yang's turn for the profession class. We then see summoning space is 1 out of 10. And just like he knew, the summoning space can accommodate summons that can be summoned at any time without the need to consume spiritual energy. And as he levels up, the capacity will also go up. He then gets a glimpse and remembers that when I just changed his profession, he seems to have seen a real necromancer. And maybe one day, he will also be able to defeat dragons in mere seconds. I think our boy might have been too OP. We then see Gao Yun and he is like, what do you think of that? I'm a sword and shield knight and it is an advanced profession and he says that he will protect him and then Lin Bo Yu starts to talk more and he is like you finally opened your mouth huh I just said that the opposite on purpose didn't you notice the president then says that the transfer is over and no matter what profession you have changed to the academy has arranged the place for you to improve and tomorrow the novice leveling dungeon of Xi High City will also be open and he tells him to get good grades on the big test in a week and get into the institution for the higher learning of their choice. Our boy Lin Mo Yu then starts to think that the monsters in the newbie upgrade dungeons are concentrated in levels 1 to 8, and the number is small and is way safer than the wilderness. And just at that moment, Ashue calls out to him, and she says, Lin Mo Yu, I want to compete with you. Let's compare the results and the exam. Don't you dare to compete. This girl really is a tsundere. And she says, although I lost to you again today, I will not be defeated. We are at Lin Mo Yu's home, and he seems to be looking at a picture. It is a picture of his grandma and his sister. And he says that he has successfully changed his profession to a super rare hidden one. And he also tells his sister that just wait, because he will also be admitted to Sha Jing Academy. Just at that moment, he sees somebody knock on his door. And it is the president, Lu Yun. He then says, hey Lin Mo Yu, come take these supplies first. And he also mentions that last year in Jihai City, only this kid's older sister, Lin Mo Han, was admitted to Xi Jing Academy alone. And that's where our boy's sister is at. He also says that he promised his sister to take good care of our boy Lin Mo Yu, and she agreed to go to Xi Jing. So now he has to keep his promise. He says thank you, and then the principal says, Tomorrow you will enter the dungeon for the test, so make sure you get good sleep. It is midnight and our boy is still trying to get the system working. 
he sees system loading. And then it says, the host has awakened to the necromancer profession. And the profession meets the requirements. The strongest talent system is binding. We then see some more things say it, that he has obtained the skill. Damage transfer as a passive one. And that it basically is all skill effects are increased by five times and all the damage received by the mage is taken by the summoner. And of course, this is completely goaded. He then summons a skeleton warrior and we see the animation and it looks as cool as ever. He loses 10 spiritual power, but then that's not really a big deal. We see the black iron skeleton warrior. His strength is 75 and all the other stats are 75 as well. And this means that our boy has literally just got a cheat code. And that with the damage transfer skill, he will be invincible at the same level. But a awesome way to start the first chapter. The next day, we are at the novice leveling dungeon. And of course, our boy Gao Yang says, Yo Mo Yu, you want to team up here? And then we see the galaxy wallpaper. I mean, the rift that looks like a galaxy wallpaper. Of course, he says nothing. And then... Gao Yang says, you prick, why are you looking down on me? I invited you all the way here with my sincerity. And then Mo Yu is just like, teaming up will make it slow, so going solo is faster. And then Xiao Shui is like, what Lin Mo Yu said is correct, because the experience is equally split between you two during co-op. And she also mentions that according to seniors, teaming up after level 10 is probably the best time to team up. We then see President Lu Yun, and then he says, at least you guys are still students, so there's no trick and schemes. And then he also says that the other combat professions will bring support into the dungeon. And then they're like, why don't they need support? And then the principal says that Xiao Shui is aiming for Xia Jing Academy, so she needs to level up fast. And besides, she is an elemental mage. And for Lin Mo Yu, Master Shang and I, they don't really understand how his ability works. So the supports can just ask them if they want to team up. And then we see the three girls, and they're like, I'm pretty scared of those undead. He then whips out the staff spirit, and he gets a plus one. He says that he's also aiming for the Xia Jing Academy, so that he can go there faster, he will go solo. The principal then says, do you know how hard it is to get into Xia Jing Academy? And if you're thinking you'll get in, you'll have to be able to be level 12, or even level 15 to be safe before the final trial, and the principal looks kind of nervous. So I'm guessing this is really tough. He also says that his sister Lin Mohan got into the academy at level 16. He also then says that do you think it's easy just to level up to level 12 in a short week? It'll get harder when you get to level 15. And then he also mentions that the highest level of monsters in the novice dungeon is only level 8 so there's no way he can get to level 12. And besides that there's also a lot of other requirements that will be revealed during the final trial. He then gives him a smug look, and then he says, I have confidence. And then the president says, good kid. And he says, since this kid has a hidden profession, this might actually work. We then see Xiao Shui, and she is like, let's compete to see who can go faster. And if you keep quiet, then I'll count you in. And our boy is just like, okay, okay, whenever, because this girl is so competitive. They enter the rift, and then our boy releases his fire from his hands, and then he notices that it used up 10 spirit points when he summoned an undead last night. And after meditating for one night, his spirit has recovered to 40 points. So now he summons four undead knights. He then points his staff and he tells them to go and find and kill these monsters. Ah, uh, our boy really is just laying back and enjoying the harvest without even moving a single finger. Successfully eliminated Big Ears Rabbit plus 10 XP. Successfully eliminated Big Ears Rabbit plus 10 XP, and it keeps on going on. He says that every single monster that has been eliminated by the Skeleton Warrior raises his experience by 1%, so eliminating 100 will literally be enough to level up. This really is an OP way to level up, but you could call it solo leveling. I didn't say anything guys, please don't copyright me. He says he leveled up in half an hour, and we now see that his level is 2, and he's at 1%. Strength is at 20, Agility 20, Spirit 40, Physique 20. And of course, he has 6 out of 20 Skeleton Warrior in his summoning space. He is like, I can summon another level 2 Undead Knight now. And then he spawns one in. And then he all has 125 as his stats. 
He also mentioned that he has now eight spaces that he can put into his summon space. And he says that this is just the beginning. Boom. He kills a great cat. A brown dog dies. And then a blue-eyed rat dies. Giving him a total of 90 XP. He says, The trace of the skeleton warriors will create a map. And this seems to be a pretty useful function. He also mentions that there are some monsters that the skeleton warriors have missed. And he wonders if he can try his active skill now. Boom. Soul Blaze. He literally eliminates this cat in a single hit. And his heart is set ablaze. But of course, that is not a Demon Slayer reference. He says that a skill with 5 times of the boost, a level 2 great cat turns into ashes in mere seconds. He also says that because of this, he can level up. And without the boost from the talent, Necromancer won't be any less powerful than any legendary profession. We now see that he is level 3, and our boy has just undergone a transformation. He then summons more skeleton warriors, and we just see it pop up. Loads and loads of level 5 monsters literally getting wrecked by his skeleton warriors. He says that it's been 4 hours, and now there are only 8 hours left, but he has already reached level 4. And if this continues with his speed, it will only take him less than an hour to level up again. And if he's able to get to level 8, then he says that he will go to Shihai Suburbia because there's even higher level monsters there. Our boy really is just really leveling up way too fast. We then see Xiao Dongyang, the head of the Xia family, and he's also Xia Shui's father. The principal says, Mr. Xia, you're here to visit Xia Shui, right? And then he says, it's all thanks to you, Principal Lu. We're taking care of Xiao Xue all these years. Looks like they have a good relationship. The principal, while holding his drink, says that I'm sure you must have known it's a rare profession for her to get the elemental mage. The guy says that it's sad that he was busy yesterday and he wasn't able to see her transmutation. He also mentions that he cannot miss her first dungeon too. He says that her seniors, Su Xian Xing and Lin Mohan, both are rare professions. And they even got to level 5 when they got out of the dungeon. And he thinks that Xiao Shui should be the same level as well. He says, I hope that girl has been very competitive because she really wants this to happen. The principal says, we'll be able to foresee their speed of leveling up in the next few days, judging by how they did in the first day. But of course, the principal's mind is just focused on what level Lin Mo Yu will be. Because he is a hidden professionalist. We then see 12 hours. He explains that there is a countdown when somebody enters the dungeon and that after the 12 hours, they can see how much they leveled up. The father says, right. I heard that there was another hidden profession appearing during yesterday's transmutation. And the principal says, yeah, that is Lin Mo Yu. And he got the necromancer. He also mentions that Mo Yu's sister is Lin Mo Han. And if Xiao Shui is able to make it into Xia Jing Academy, maybe you can have Lin Mo Han look out for her. We are back into the dungeon, and we see him along with his skeleton soldier. He says that the furthest distance that the skeleton warriors can be away from him is 500 meters, so he can just literally be AFK and wait to level up within this area. And oh gosh, if only I had this ability to literally have these guys do my homework for me. We then see that almost 7 hours have passed, and that he hasn't seen any level 8 monsters. And we see his skeleton soldiers just taking down these level 7 and level 6 beasts. He wonders how the others are doing. But boom. He gets sliced. And it says that his passive skill damage transfer has activated. We then see the bull whip tree. It is in hibernation for most of the time and will attack any living creature passing by. And it is first level 8 monster. Lin Mo Yu says, so this is a level 8 monster in the novice dungeon, huh? And he says that the stats of his skeleton warriors have reached 275. So he says, let's see how much damage you can take in. One of the skeleton warrior attacks it. And he is like, it didn't just die. He says that eliminating a level 8 monster needed 4 slashes. So this will greatly decrease his speed of leveling up. He then attacks it. And of course, he successfully eliminated the level 8 bullwhip tree. We also see a lot of them. And he says that there's already hundreds of bullwhip trees within this area that he can see. And so this is literally a leveling up sanctuary 
made specifically for our boy, as he just remains AFK. Bull, one is taken down, another is taken down, and another is taken down. We then see the rift, and it seems somebody is walking out. We then see, you must get through the forest guarded by level 8 monsters in order to find the exit. So he wonders if it could be. And then somebody says that it's weird because the time is not up yet. And he wonders if there was accidents. Lin Mo Yu walks out. And then they're like, why are you out here? And he simply says with a calm, smug face, I killed them all, so. And the principal is like, you're level 7? Because he managed to get level 7 in just a span of 10 hours. He says there's two little monsters in there or else he would have been able to get to level 8. And he says, Mentor Lu, I wish to go to Shihai Suburbia. The principal is like, this is the first time I've heard that there's somebody killing everything in the novice domain and only in 10 hours. And our boy waves his hand in front of Mentor Lu because it seems like he is daydreaming now. He wonders how Lin Mo Yu was able to do this. And he wonders if that is a skill of a necromancer. He then says nervously, okay, I'll get you a traveling certificate. And he also mentions that he can rest up for a bit and wait for the other students to come out and that he will send him back. And just at that moment, one of his subordinates says, why did that student get out so early? And then he says, Lao Lu, are you okay? He says, yeah, is he all right? Why is he alone and where are his teammates? The principal says, he is Lin Mo Yu. He got through the novice dungeon and slaughtered all the level 8 monsters inside. All of them are shocked because they've never seen how powerful legendary professions are, but they know for a fact that there's no way they can have that quick of a speed. And this is the power of the hidden profession. The principal says that this kid will have a bright future, so there's no need to worry, and that if he manages to get into Shajing Academy, then I guess they'll be having a headache instead of the principal. Xiao Shui's father says that she has been competitive since she was young, and he is afraid that this will be very impactful towards her. The principal puts his hand on his shoulder and says, Ah ha ha ha, not just this time. You're not home often so you don't know, but Lin Mo Yu's results have been on top of Xiao Shui's for all these years. And that girl has been in second place forever now. And the father is like, That girl didn't even tell me anything like that. We then see Lin Mo Yu, and he says that at this moment, he'll be able to summon 24 skeleton warriors and that he has 70 spots for his warriors. He says if he were to think of occupying all the spots, then it will need some time, and he just sits there on a rock meditating with his awesome staff. We then see Lin Mo Yu, and she says, I won't lose this time, because she has already reached level 5, which is basically the standard of the novice dungeon's record. And she's like, where the heck is Lin Mo Yu? And it turns out that she doesn't know. She's like, when did he get out? Wait, he is. And we see, he is level 7, and she is literally shocked. She then sees her father by the car, and he's like, What's up, Xiao Shui? And she asks why her dad is here. He is in the car, and then he asks, Do you need help? And why are you still competing with that kid? This guy really is a menace to his daughter. She says, He's a total bad guy, and he's been more powerful for me than the last three years. This girl really is a competitive spirit. He says, I'm telling you, this Lin Mo Yu got out of the dungeon in 10 hours and he killed all of the level 8 monsters. And then she says, this is the thing, I won't keep losing to that guy. But then after she hears that, she looks back at her father like, killed all the level 8 monsters? And then she mentions that she just got to the area of level 7 monsters and she didn't even get to seal single level 8. And she also mentions, besides that, he got out two hours earlier, and if there's more monsters in there, does that mean he'll be able to reach level 8? And then we see Cao Yang, and I think our boy Cao Yang is literally the simp and the new waifu. And he says, Mo Yu, how did you get to level 7? And he says, no, forgive me, I meant boss Lin, please bring me with you. And then Lin Mo Yu is like, bruh. He tells him that he'll bring him with him next time. And then Gao Yang is like, then that settles it. I'll wait for you at the school entrance tomorrow. And he gives a very charming look. The next day, we see him kind of bummed out. And he is like, Mentor Lu, why isn't Mo Yu here? And then Principal Lu says he went to Shihai Suburbia. 
And then he yells and he says, Curse you, Limbo you! You fooled me! I shall battle you! And then the principal is like, Give up, you can't win. We are then at the Shen Shia Empire Exchange, and this looks like a pretty cool and tall building. We then see somebody's hand on a crystal, and it says, I initializing identification. Identification, succeed, citizen of Shen Shia Empire, Lin Mo Yu, and he has permission granted for the Shen Shia Empire Exchange. His authority is only level 1. He thinks and wonders if there's any mission suitable for him. We see collected but limited amount of green sprout, and the price is 50 gold a portion. We also see another mission, which is raid the level 14 domain of Zhi High Mines and acquire domain's boss, King Goblin's core. He finds this interesting, and then he says that it might be difficult. We then see the normal difficulty, and he mentions that it goes from normal, nightmare, and hell. The nightmare difficulty is many times harder than the normal one and it will be impossible to pass without a strong team. And then the hell difficulty. It's not something that normal professions could do at all. And he says that he can't take on that mission for now. We then see a large knight, and is it just me or does this guy look like Igris from solo leveling? Let me know what you guys think. He says, profession is a necromancer. And he says, Linmo Yu level 7 necromancer? He wonders which academy is letting a mere level 7 out of town. The guy says that your traveling certificate has been active and you'll be able to freely travel around the cities in the Shensha Empire. He says if you encounter any danger, you're allowed to return because your life matters the most. And our boy just says that he will. He then goes past a wall and it becomes an utter desert. He says that it is not just a simple wall. It's two different worlds in and outside of the city. He also mentions that he can literally hear beasts growling. And there's even a flow of blood circulating around the air. Just as he's looking around, a goblet is behind him. He summons one of his soldiers and he says, Go kill that goblet. It is a goblet in patrols. Level 10, strength 120, physique 120, agility and spirit are 50, and it has no skills. He says that a level 10 goblet is practically nothing to a skeleton warrior with stats of level 375. The goblin attacks him, and the skeleton warrior takes no damage at all, and of course, he ends it in an instant. We then see Lin Mo Yu, and there are a lot of goblins headed his direction. He says if he manages to keep up with his speed, he'll get level 15 in no time, and he's getting literally 300 XP from killing all of these monsters. He says that his sister got to level 16 before the trial, and he wonders how did she do that. He then gets a flashback to her holding bread, and she seems way different from how he was imagining her a while ago, and he says that he will get into Jia Jing's academy. We then see Lin Mo Yu, level 10, strength, agility, physique 100, and spirit 300, and now he has 40 skeletons and 100 is the limit. He mentions that there isn't a big change in the other stats, Every time it levels up, it'll only increase by 10. But his spirit is at 300 and an increase in points, which is a massive W. He also mentions that they said that there'll be a huge boost after reaching level 10. And so, he belongs in the mage profession. So the biggest boost is spirit. And now, he never thought that he would become level 10 so quickly. We then see, he has a broad skeleton warrior. Strength, 1500. Agility, Spirit, and Physique are all the same. He also has a Rage Shot, which is to create 200% of the damage based on own strength on target, and the cooldown is 10 minutes. This has become quite out of hand, and I think our boy might just solo the verse. He then says, It seems like he'll be able to rule this area just with his Bronze Skeleton Warrior. And that he is like, Wait, as he looks around, I think I cleared all the monsters here. But boom, something launches towards him, and he manages to see it. He doesn't manage to dodge it, but he did use damage transfer. And then, boom. We then see a girl, and she seems to be in a hood, and she has a mask on. He says, who is this girl? He says it's probably an assassin profession, and the one who attacked him might be an archer professional. We then see the arrow stabbed on his chest, and the girl just runs straight past him. He says, it's them. And then he says that their direction is wrong. 
and they'll never get that assassin. The man then says, that person is cunning and an assassin too, and he probably escaped. And then one of the guys with the bow says, hey kid, did you see a person with black clothes passing by? He says, your arrow hit me, and apologize, as he gives them a menacing look. And of course, a side eye. I'm pretty sure they know better not to mess with the MC of a manhua. Surprisingly, the man with the bow says, sorry for that. And the guy is like, this kid got hit by my arrow, but somehow he's fine. Lin Mo Yu is just like, just don't do it again. And then he says, this kid, doesn't he know that I'm not in a good mood? And then he realizes and he thinks, is that a skeleton warrior? And it seems that he has some knowledge about this. Guy with the staff grunts and says, Only the ones who are hidden criminals with dark mentality would be able to awaken such disgusting professions of summoning the undead. And he says that he's definitely not some good guy. The archer says, Stop it. And then he says, I know. He then walk past him and he says, Consider yourselves fortunate. And then he also says, If they did something, they'll get it back a hundred times worse. And he see the aura on his hand start to fade away. We then see level 10 goblin patrol eliminated, level 11 goblin soldier eliminated, and he has obtained the goblin's bone. He is literally just sitting as they fight, and then he says the experience points are decreasing, and that after level 10, the experience needed to level up has increased by a whopping 3 times. And according to our boy's calculations, that means he has to kill 5,000 goblins just to raise in level. And he does mention that he doesn't think that he'll be able to reach level 11 if the skeleton warrior kept on killing without exhaustion. He says there's not much time, and he can't go back. He then leaps forward with the skeleton army, and he says if it wants to get into Shajing Academy, he has to do more than others, because who is going to carry the bows? We see him set up camp, there's fire, and he says that based on the current speed of leveling up, he'll be able to reach level 13 by tomorrow but it really is still unclear if he can get to level 15 the day after. And he also mentions that after reaching level 15, it'll be way harder to make it to level 16. And so his only goal is to truly make it to level 16, and even that is pushing it. He wonders how his sister managed to level up that time, because he knows he's a sword dancer in the legendary profession, but there really is no way that she could level up so fast and even faster than him. As he is thinking, he realizes something. Ji Hai Mai's dungeon. He wonders if she had teamed with other people and raided the nightmare difficulty dungeon that has way more XP. That would explain why she was wounded when she made it back that time. He then shakes his leg and says that his guess might be correct. And so he has to go and take a look tomorrow. Just at that moment, we see somebody approach him and a skeleton warrior looks at it as well. He says, leveling professional, there's not a lot of people who would be leveling here at midnight. Are they lost? And it is a girl from earlier, the assassin. She says, do you have any food? And of course, our boy gives some to her. She pulls her mask down and she seems to be pretty cute. She then starts to chew down on this potato and he is like, this girl must be very hungry. And of course... She starts to choke because she doesn't have water, so he gives her some as well, and she literally just chugs it down. She says, what is your name? And he doesn't say anything. She then also says, you don't like talking? Then why don't we analyze skills with each other? They then touch their fingers, and we see an orb of light arise. Analytic skill. Boom. Analysis has failed, and he wonders if he did not get any information. She says, didn't get anything, right? And then she manages to see his stats though. You're called Lin Mo Yu, level 10, and your occupation is a necromancer, she says. I've never heard of this occupation before. It is quite strange. She then ponders back earlier, and she says that I think I saw that you had a skeleton standing next to you during the afternoon. And she says that summons, and especially undead summons, are extremely rare. She then asks, why don't you talk? Because don't tell me you're muted though, because you don't look like it. And then he is like, why? She's happy that he talked. And of course, her boy just says, why? She then says, are you asking why your analytics skill did not work? And she says, it's because of this. It's a blocking badge and it looks like an X-Men logo. She says, as long as you have it, anyone who's not 
10 levels above you won't be able to use analytic skill on you. She then makes it disappear and she says, try using the occupation skill now. We then see her name is Ming Yi Yi. Her occupation is a shadow assassin and she is a level 19 one at that. As they're thinking, they then look back and it is the people from earlier. He says a skeleton has already detected them. Are they thinking of surrounding us? She says as she stands up, it's just a mid rank skill scripture. They've been going for me for days, and they still haven't given up. As she is speaking, an arrow launches at her, and she barely manages to avoid it. But it hits the log, and it isn't a normal arrow. It is a marking arrow, and now it is a problem. Our boy Lin Mo Yu says that Archer has anti invisibility skills, and this skill will be able to mark the target, which makes them easier to target and unable to enter invisibility. And this was literally specially made to counterpart with assassins and monsters that have invisibility power. He then looks back and it's the guy from earlier. And he says, there's no way to run this time. And the archer is on the tree above them. And then the guy says, I knew it. You're a team. A disgusting rat assassin and a malicious dark undying summoner make a good duo, I must say. And then she says, he's not a part of this. I'll give you the skill scripture, and we'll go our separate ways. The archer then says, It would have been fine if you did it a day before, but now it's safer just killing you. She then tells Lin Mo Yu, I'll buy you some time so you can run. And then she also mentions that he's only level 10, and so she cannot drag him with her for something that she has done. And looks happy, and she smiles saying, I am the shadow assassin, and beneath the night is where she dances. And so she has her own way to get out of here. She also says you wouldn't be running away during daytime if you really are capable. And obviously, they are more powerful. He also says she's already marked, so her invisibility skill is gone. And then, the archer is like, just cut the crap, let's not waste any time on her. The guy then lifts his staff and it starts to glow. And then he says, I just don't want your life today. I want that guy to be dead too. We then see the illumination skill and her boy thinks he is Escanor. It is explained that the illumination skill wasn't only used to illuminate, it will chase away the darkness, increasing the range of his ability. The most important part is that it can counterpart with the assassin's invisibility skill, which means that she's a piece of dead meat. She then has a blade in her hand, she says, and she has to go all out right now. The archer is ready, the guy with the shield is ready, and of course the staff man magician is ready. They are literally in the center of the attacks. And I wonder what's going to happen. Our boy Lin Mo Yu says come. And one of his soldiers come out of nowhere. The guy says. Tch, what a waste of energy. Undying summons. Disgusting. He then says that his balls. I mean his blazing fireballs. Are skills of a level 20 mage. And that he'll blow him up to ashes. And then the girl pulls him by his arm. And is like let's run. But unfortunately we see that her ankle. Has been caught by spiritual strings. And it is the archer who set it up. He then loads up three arrows and shoots at them. And it is headed towards them. She pushes Lin Mo Yu away. So he won't get hit by the arrows. But he just gets hit by the fireball. And she is like, what have I done? But just at that moment, we then see his skeleton knights block the attack. And they block the arrows as well. It seems like we might have the upper hand. We then see... His bronze skeleton, and this boy has two axes in his hand, and he's ready to cut down some wood. The mage is like, how could this be? The analytics still shows that this kid is just a level 10 necromancer, and he tells him not to get closer. We find out that the guy is a level 21 mage, and he's just a level 10, so how the heck could he be alive still? But then, we find out that their skills have no effect on the summons, and that the summons have such high stats. Little blue flames appear around all of them. And then, we see a massive horde of skeletons surrounding them. And it seems that they have chosen the wrong fight. We see the girl. She is in utter shock. And she is like, are those really the skeleton warriors that she saw before? They are broken, but why are they so strong? She even mentions that these really are level 10s. But a level 20 mage cannot even do damage to them. And then we see a whole bunch of them. And she wonders if this is too much. 
He then looks at Lin Lo Yu, and then we see all of the other skeleton warriors around him, and we see the comprehensive increase of activated. Damage transfer, Soul Blaze level 10, Summon Skeleton Warrior level 10, and all of it has increased by 10 times, and that he is able to summon a Bronze Skeleton Warrior. It looks like the Three Stooges just don't know what trouble they got themselves into this time. The chapter starts, and the guy is trying to fend off these skeletons. Although, one of the skeletons swings its sword at his shield, and of course, it cracks right open. He then releases a fire spell, and he says, have a taste of my power. And guys, this guy knows he's gonna lose. The zombies jump on top of him, and then they slice him into pieces. One of the guys running says, instant kill, but it's only been a few seconds. And he also mentioned that his agility attribute is obviously a thousand. So why the heck can he not get away from these skeletons? And we find out it's because the skeletons have an agility of 1500. We then see one of the guards and he has such good defense to the point where our boy Lin Mo Yu is shocked. We see him with his shield and then Lin Mo Yu says a level 20 knight performing the skill is able to withstand the attacks of a level 40 mage. But then, we see our boy Lin Mo Yu put his hand up and he says, Use skill, stop him from running. We then see a skeleton holding his fiery blazing sword and he says Berserk Strike. Berserk Strike inflicts 200% of its own strength on the target and its strength is 1500. He then slices up and through his barrier and it's C. Extreme defense can last up to one minute, but the more intense the attack, the shorter it will last. And this guy gets surrounded by the skeletons, and he meets his demise. We then get a flashback, and it seems to be his sister. And then he says, Mo Yu, remember, if you set your mind to do anything, then do it, and never hesitate. The girl is shocked. And then Lin Mo Yu says, when a professional dies, the items of their storage will drop. So let's see what they have. We see, they have the bronze rank carbon staff. Spirit plus 20, and it can increase the powerful or the power of mage skills by 5%, available only after level 18. We have the Bronze Rank Carmen's Battle Bow, Agility plus 20, and we have the Bronze Rank Carmen's Shield, Physique plus 20. We also have the Bronze Rank Carmen's Sword, which is Strength plus 10, Stamina plus 10, and it can increase the power of magic attack skills by 5%. But it seems you all need to be level 18. The girl then asks Ning Yi Yi, These are the weapons dropped in the dungeons of Carmen's Orc Legion. And she says that that is a level 20 dungeon outside of Shao Hai City. So they must have gone there together. He then whips out his portable storage. And he says that he'll store these equipments for now. And it's because they're pretty useless. Ning Yi Yi is like, Hey, I don't think you've ever had a primary school, have you? And then we see... The primary skill scroll. You can obtain skills below level 20, and it is possible to obtain acquired skills. He says you should really use it, because although you might get a skill you already learned, there's also a chance of learning new skills. And she mentions, you won't sell it for much, and because it's on an advanced skill scroll, it's not worth a lot of money. He asks how to use it, and she says it's simple, just say use while holding the scroll. He says use. And I think nothing happens. She then looks at him with a smile and says, Ay, ay, you said it too softly. You need to say it louder in order for it to work. She is literally sparkling all around her body. And he says, looks like it's a scroll that requires spiritual energy to activate. And then he releases his spiritual energy into it. And she is like, how did you find out? Because she tried to troll him. We then see he acquired the skill of corpse as he see the orange flame in his hand. He says he got a new skill, so this girl really wasn't that bad. He says to a necromancer, corpses also contain life, and even though the skill might look weak, if you factor in his talent, his radius will increase by 10 meters, and we see a picture of what could happen after his AoE, his area of effect skills, are given a larger area. Ning Yi asks, how is it? Did you learn a new skill? As we see, his body being surrounded by aura. He says yes. And then she says, you have a nice voice. So why don't you talk a lot? It's such a pity. And then he just looks at her. 
And then he says, this girl is a bit different from those girls in high school. Our boy really got that necromancer riz. He says, you have a nice voice too. And she just sparkles and lights up saying, thank you for your compliment. I know my voice is very nice. She then says, as a repayment for saving me and even complimenting me, I'll give you this. And she hands him a treasure chest. Inside, it says, an intermediate skill scroll. You can obtain skills between level 40 and level 70. And it is possible to obtain acquired skills. He is like, what the heck? An intermediate skill scroll? This is something worth 1 million. And it's way more expensive than a primary skill scroll. He then wonders, wasn't she chased because of the scroll and now she's just giving it away? She says she obtained the scroll after opening the chest, to which she was being watched by the three mages. She says they wanted to snatch it, so they chased her and she just had to escape. And after running for more than two days from Shaohai City to Zihai City, they were still on her, like stinky pugs. He then sits down and says, you almost died just now. And she says, if I receive a critical damage, she will be automatically teleported away. And then she looks at him. And she says, it's painful when you get hurt. So I'm scared of getting hurt the most. And then he just looks at her. And of course, he wonders. Looks like I was worried for nothing. She must be the young lady of some big family and had a treasure that can save her if needed. She then asks, do you have any food to eat? Because I'm hungry. And then our boy is holding a croissant. He gives it to her, or sorry, it's a potato. And she says, are you here to farm levels? Looking at your level now, you haven't gone to university, right? And she asks which one he is planning to go to. He says, Xia Jing University. She then says, not bad. And she also mentions with his skills, he should be able to get into the university. But, however, she points her finger up and says, if you go to Xia Jing University, remember to head to the Shen Xia Tower. The first clear will give you double the reward, so you need to clear as many floors as possible in the first try. But guys, if you're seeing this, this seems like a literal, very scary castle and it has an ominous red aura around it. And I don't think that's somewhere you want to go on your first day of school. She explains you'll get a lot of points this way in Xia Jing. And in the Xia Jing, points are the equivalent of gold coins. And then she falls asleep and her boy gives her his sweater like an absolute giga chad he then starts to meditate because he needs to recover his spiritual energy the next day ning yi yi says i'm hungry do you have potatoes and then she asks him for potatoes and she literally has like 50 that she is holding and she says you're the big man here so give me more he then explains there's really nothing left and she says i believe you this girl must really love sweet potatoes she then gets up and she says I'll be going to raise my level now, so let's meet again next time. And she says that you can quickly level up too, so that we can meet together. She runs away, and she also mentions that they should level up together next time. And then now our boy is alone, and he says it's time to try my new skill. And then we see the mage's bodies on the ground, and I think our boy is going to turn them into his skeleton army troops. Corpse explosion. Boom. The explosion literally sets the body on fire. He says after being enhanced by my talent, the area of effect has increased by a lot. And so now it's basically a divine skill. And then we see, he says that he'll go try it out as a Shihai Mine Dungeon. He's walking and he mentions that after the skeleton warrior transitions from black iron to bronze, it takes 70 spirit points to summon one. And now he only has 300. We then see the summoning space 48 out of 100, and they're all skeleton warriors. He mentions there's no need to rush, and sooner or later, the summoning space will become full. He then is looking towards the mine, and he has a skeleton worker right beside him. He says, is that the entrance to the Shiha mine? And then we see that normal difficulty, they need a healer for our party of three, and there are people or hunters around the dungeon seeking for teammates. He walks in with his skeleton buddy behind him. It says, choose your difficulty, normal or nightmare. He says there isn't a hell difficulty and there are elite monsters present in the normal difficulty already. And so it will be very much harder. He also mentions the elite monsters are enhanced and it's a lot more difficult if he chooses to do so. We then see someone ask, hey, are you a summoner? 
and he uses his dowsing ability. But then the skeleton guard gives him a bombastic side eye, and it says due to having a shielding badge, the detection technique has failed. Everyone around him is like, you're a summoner, right? They deal quite high damage, so why not we support you? And they are really just trying to join our boy Lin Mo Yu's team. He says, no thanks. And then he's wondering, as the system says, please confirm that you've selected Nightmare Difficulty. He clicks confirm, and all of them are shocked after he disappears, and they say, he's trying to clear this all by himself? What the heck? And they all say, maybe he just wanted to show off and will come running like a coward. We are inside the Shihai Mining Dungeon, and there seems to be some, or well, one goblin orc there, and a strong smell of blood. He points towards one of the goblins, and it says he is a goblin mine guard. An enhanced elite monster, which is level 14, strength 800, agility 400, spirit 200, and constitution 1000 with a stun attack. He then brings up some of his summons, and he says a constitution of a level 14 knight will be only around 300 to 400, completely unmatched for an enhanced elite monster. And a normal professional will have no way of clearing this. But compared to skeletons, as you see him here, the enhanced mind goblin's attributes are literally nothing. And it seems like our boy is ready to get the show on the road. We see the skeletons literally demolishing these goblins, and he gets 4200 XP. He says that this is 10 times higher than the monsters of the same level. And then he mentions that basically, killing one monster in here is equivalent to killing 10 on the outside. And then he says he won't let a single one live. Because he needs all of the experience points. We then get so many notifications. 14 goblin mind guards eliminated. 5 skulls obtained. 6 fur obtained. And he has leveled up. That's why I wish I had a system. Well, I guess technically we all kind of have it. We then see he reached level 11 in 5 minutes. And after leveling up his spirit recovers. So he can summon even 4 more skeletons. We see a stats window right here. He is already at 120 strength, and more importantly, he has 100 summoning space, which is absolutely crazy. We also then see that his talent comprehensive has increased to level 2, and his passive skill, damage transfer, is also there as well. We then get an explanation from the system, saying the damage taken by the necromancer itself would be transferred to the summit, and his soul flame level 11 burns the soul of the target, causing burning damage. Our boy has leveled up very significantly. He also mentions that after level 10, the increase in basic attributes has increased. Strength and agility used to increase by 10, but now it's by 20 points. We then see the skeletons literally burning, and it seems that they have gotten furious. He is looking at the bronze skeleton warrior. He says the basic attributes of them were increased by 20, and after boosted 10 times, it becomes 200. And now, all of his skills have increased except for Corpse Explosion. And then he gets a flashback to Ning Yi Yi, and he wonders if she might know why. 32.22% of the area is completed, but a sudden gush reaches his body. We then see a big wolf, and it seems to be a white one. It is a mine wolf king. It is an elite leader, level 15, and his strength and agility and constitution are literally 2,000, and his skill is roar. We then see it with his red eyes, and it seems to be in chaos mode. And then he says, even though your attributes are higher than Miss Skeleton Warriors, you're still one against many. He commands them to advance, but roar, and they just attack him with Rage Strike, and they have turned a red sort of aura. He says the bigger the enemy, the more advantageous it is for his skeleton warriors. It then roars again, and then he mentions the attack power of that skill isn't much, but it's quite good at sending things flying. It then runs away, and then he's confused because he never thought that a dungeon boss could literally run away. But then he says something is wrong, and there are some eyes behind him. We then see chains, and we see a mighty wolf, which is level 14 this time. And then he remembers that they're not just strong, but now 
they have at least a hundred of them. And even professionals in teams of five cannot cope with so many mining wolves. But he just gives a smirk as we see his skeletons taking it down. And he says, I'm a necromancer. And these are all my experience points. And our boy has become greedy for them. We then see his hair literally start to go up. Because he is about to use corpse explosion as we see the red ball of lightning or such in his hands. He says, as of the talent enhancement, the damage dealt by the skill will take away 100% of the wolf's health, which will result in an instant elimination. Boom. We then see the wolf is still there, and then Lin Bo Yu says, he's a fair person, so you should have a taste of it as well. Boom. The wolf then gets engulfed by the attack, and of course, it became defeated. We find out it gave him 15,000 experience, which is equivalent to 5 fierce wolves. And the cost effectiveness is kind of low. But fortunately, he seemed to have gotten some good dropped items. He then puts it away and he says if he keeps clearing this passage, he should soon encounter the final boss of the dungeon. And then he mentions that in the future, if he goes solo leveling, oh, I meant solo clearing dungeons, he should gain experience. Shout out to you guys who read solo leveling. He then tells us that he's leveled up about one time in just over an hour and that based on this efficiency, it is possible to reach level 19. We then see a goblin and it is a goblin king. He said it's time to wake up big guy and I should reach level 12 after killing this thing, right? It is the monster leader level 16 and it literally has 3000 strength and I think our boy might be in a predicament. It opens up his eyes, but then boom, he tries to slash Limbo Yu, but he successfully uses the damage transfer and the damage goes to his skeleton friend instead, and then it literally cracks and gets destroyed. He then mentions that it killed two skeletons in one hit, and that is a pretty pretty dangerous, but then he analyzed it and realized that his attributes are too weak and his defense is way too weak against the constitution of 3000 and then he puts his hand on his hair like an enemy protagonist or a manhwa protagonist and he says the weakness is myself and now he has to increase his own constitution we then see the goblin king and he is literally ready to get the show on the road he attacks the skeleton and then our boy lit Bo Yu is in front of him and he says don't forget i have an army of skeletons behind me the chapter starts and he says that if it goes on like this, it will be crushed by a skeleton army as we see the goblin with the skeletons on top of him. One that jumps up and it uses shockwave and it is one of the goblins. He uses fire breath and his physique is rising and then he tells the skeletons to return to the summoning space because he needs to interrupt its skill. We then see he uses soul flame on him. And now that he doesn't have enough spirit left, he needs to defeat it now. Rage strike. And finally, the Goblin King is eliminated with a whopping 40,000 experience. Holy cow, guys. And he obtained the bronze level weapon, goblin sword, bronze level equipment, wisdom robe, and of course, one of the most important ones, the Goblin King's core. He has finally reached level 12 and we see the Goblin's corpse on the ground. He thanks God and says, my spirit was replenished from the level up because I use it all up just now. And he says it's time to leave the dungeon. He then puts on the robe and he says even though he's a necromancer, he is a mage. And so his skills are very different from it. And the cooldown shortening of the robe isn't really much use for him. But of course, his spirit and physique increase by 10 so it's not that bad. He then has a core in his hand and then he says, this core is about 10,000. And that's about the price of two equipment. And the rewards of the dungeon work quite well. He then has something in his hand. And it seems to be glowing green. He mentions that after leveling up and having his spirit replenished, he can summon four skeleton warriors once again. And I think our boy is literally just about to amass an army. He says it's time to get out. And he tells a skeleton army to return. He comes out and everybody is like, wait. No way he's alive, and he even has a wisdom robe. And so, they all look, 
and they are all in shock. He then sits by his lovely tree like he usually does, and he says from the recent dungeon he figured out his biggest weakness and understood how his skills work. He gets a flashback and he says if he can utilize a corpse explosion properly, it's pretty much an invincible skill. And for the soul flame, not only can it interrupt an enemy's skill, it also ignores the enemy's defense. So even a nightmare level boss won't be able to fight well against it. And I think our boy is starting to become absolute necromancer monarch, which I'm ready to see. 12 hours later, he can summon four skeletons again. As he is walking, he says that these people usually gather outside the wilderness, so they are experienced. And then he gets a flashback towards Ning Yi Yi, and then he says, but that person is something different. We then see him, and they are outside of the dungeon. It is people, and they are fighting, and he seems to be intrigued by this. They go back and forth saying, isn't the dynasty guild being too unfair? What gives you the right from stopping us from entering the dungeon? And he says, it's not like the dynasty guild owns it. A guy with orange hair or peach hair says, the guild leader is completing a task in the dungeon. No one is allowed inside until he's done. They say as if the dynasty guild is just abusing their power. And then it seems like he uses an attack. He pushes a person back and then he literally just died. And I don't know if this is right. This is definitely wrong. They are looking at him and they are like, how could you just kill him? The guy with peach hair and his comrades, they just give a smirk and they say, if you have the guts, then come take revenge on us. We'll welcome you with open arms. Lin Mo Yu says, what's going on? And the guy's like, hey, that's the guy that's literally solo cleared the dungeon. And then he explains, it's like this. The Dynasty Guild needs the Goblin King's core, but the drop rate of that is super low and it will only drop me the Nightmare level and will only appear once in 100 days. And because today is the 100th day, since the last drop, they're making a move, but I don't think they know our boy Lin Mo Yu already has it. The guy then explains that the task to get the Goblin King's core was actually made by the Dynasty Guild, but until now, nobody really has it. And then he says, what a joke. The Goblin King's core is worth at least 30,000 gold, and putting 10,000 gold as a price is literally just a scam, and they really are trying to finesse our boy Lin Mo Yu. He asks, what's the core, and what is it for? He says it can be made into a Goblin King's ring, and all attributes increase by 10, and all skill levels increase by 1, and it can be only used from level 15 onwards, and it is the strongest accessory to have, below level 40. We then see the ring here, and it looks pretty aesthetic and cool. And the guy explains that they say that the guild leader of the Dynasty Guild is aiming for Jia Jing Academy, and that's why he wants it. And then our boy Lin Mo Yu just says in his head, to a beginner, it would seem like an overpowered accessory to have. And then Lin Mo Yu literally just walks past him. And the guy is like, what are you doing? Quickly come back. We don't stand up to the Dynasty Guild because you'll die. And then we see them literally trampling over somebody. And then they say, a guildless person dares to attack us? Don't even think about appearing in front of us next time, you understand? And then they ask if he is there to die too. He then gives... The necromancer light skin stare of Riz and he says you're blocking my way. And then he says you little crap did you knock your head on the wall? Do you know who you're talking to? He says get lost. Because he is a level 12 necromancer. And then he says the guy the enemy with peach hair. You're only a level 12 rookie who can't understand words. You can't just kill monsters outside. Why do you need to enter the dungeon? And then the people around him are like quickly come back. The dynasty guild doesn't listen to reason and they won't even hesitate to kill you. And then he says, why does that brat's gaze make me feel so nervous? Why isn't he scared? He then is about to attack him, but I don't think they know that our boy is ready. He then commands the other people and officers behind him to eliminate our boy. And one of them is even a level 25 mage. And he says a level 12 nobody like you won't even be able to rig my shield if I stand still and let you hit it. But then the skeleton attacks it and it instantly starts to crack. Rage strike. And then he says, no, if this attack hits, I won't just break my shield, I'll die. And then he uses his fire repulsion ring. And then the guy is like, what are you doing? Quickly attack, as a skeleton is going head to head. We then see, he is literally getting pushed back by the summoner. And then the peach haired guy is like, you have to eliminate the summoner. A lady and a man with three arrows say, since you dare challenge the dynasty guild, 
you should be prepared to die. And they launch these not so safe looking arrows at him. He then brings out two more summons and he says come out of there. And it seems that they literally just block the arrows with their swords with ease. And both of them are shot. He is like how can he summon more than one? And they say everyone buy me some time. He then uses the fire serpent dance on Lin Mo Yu. And that's a level 20 skill. He then says only one in three mages are able to learn that skill. And that's the strongest attack of a level 20 mage. It is on the way and it's directed towards Lin Mo Yu. And the guy with peach hair just gives a smirk. But then of course we see the skeletons pop up in front of him. And he asks why are there so many? He says that guy's a monster. They have exceeded our numbers. And the chapter comes to an end. And that's why you don't mess with the MC protagonist. He calls everybody and he says formation so that they can attack. And we then see strength enhanced, agility enhanced, spirit enhanced, speed enhanced, and speed enhanced. And it seems that they are powering up. He then smiles and he says, support your blessings and the supporters. Give them some extra boost. He then mentions that his guild is extremely experienced and they know how to work together. And so this should be a piece of cake. Our boy Lin Mo Yu then looks behind him. And he says, you guys step back as he unleashes the soul flame. We then see one of the archers getting ready to attack him. But then, boom, he seems to be lit up on fire. And then one of the guys asks, as expected of the dynasty guild, their healers are so good. But then the healer is shocked and the guy's head literally gets burned off. He then asks, is our guild really going to be wiped out by one person? And he calls them all to attack. At the same time, somebody uses shield, but it seems it can't even hold anymore because he uses the rage strike and all his skeletons have gone berserk. Boom! The shield literally gets shattered and the sword strikes towards these hunters. The peach hair guy says, That guy isn't even human at all. And Lin Mo Yu just says, as he's sitting back, he says there's nowhere to escape. And then he uses corpse explosion the peach guy tries to run but that all of them are set ablaze he says a knight's health is one of the best among the professions so if the damage is 100 of their health there should be no one left alive the peach guy manages to escape the attack for now but he falls onto the ground and he sees lin mo yu standing there unfazed he is facing the dungeon or the entrance of it and then he uses corpse explosion once again. He says they all died like that. There's nothing really left, even their corpses. And then he says this is complete annihilation. I really can't say anything else. The guy then says, one of the randoms there, with their personality, they'll definitely catch us and defeat us one by one and eliminate us. And he tells them all to leave. We then see half an hour later, somebody comes back and he says, I still couldn't get the goblin's core. We then see, somebody says guild leader, and then he wonders why no one's here. He asks, where did Zhao Ji and the rest go? What about the other randoms, they all disappeared? He then says, send a message if they're nearby, they will definitely answer. He then starts to sweat and he is nervous, and he says something is definitely wrong. He also thinks in his head that they are the strongest in this area, and is it even a possibility that they've gotten eliminated? He says it could be dangerous here, so let's move. One hour later, we see our boy Lin Mo Yu wearing the wisdom robe, and our boy really got the drip. He then kills another goblin king and 40,000 experience gained, and he obtained a low level monster core. He says it looks like the goblin king's core wasn't dropped by the boss again, and he'll have to wait till he gets to the Jia Jing Academy and find an alchemist before making the goblin's ring. He then has a goblin king's magic book, and then he says this magic book is useful. And it's good for the soul flame and corpse explosion. And our boy has reached level 13 and he just leveled up. He then mentions it's a bit lower than he wants, but it should be enough for him to get to the Jia Jing Academy. And he uses teleport. As soon as he is outside, he wonders why everyone left. And he says, I guess as expected, leaving was the best choice for them. I mean, obviously guys, would you guys stay if you saw a literal Giga Chad level 99 sorcerer outside of a dungeon? I'm guessing no. The next day we see Xia Shui and she is by the Xi High Mind Dungeon 
and she says because she is finally level 10, she can enter the mind. She is like, it's Lin Mo Yu. He's the only one in this place that can summon those kinds of creatures, a necromancer. And she says, is he really going solo? And our girl really is about to take another L once more, even though she just hit level 10. She then says, she's also a rare elemental mage, and so it's going to be easy for her for finding a party. 45 minutes later, and of course, it's still our boy raiding the dungeons. He says after leveling up and using meditation to recover his spirit, his skeleton army is now at 72, and it's almost filled out of the 110. He then says, it's time to wake up Mr. Goblin King. He defeats it with ease, and of course, he did get another stone. He then says to the goblin, you're a monster that's meant to be killed, right? So being killed isn't anything to be surprised, no? And being defeated by me is faster and less torturous for you. And he says, I don't even want to defeat you, but I have no choice since I need to level up. Ah, guys, and 12 hours later, he is back and he says, come on, just three more times. He then says, we're acquainted with each other already, aren't we? And he is at level 14 at 60%. We then see him sitting down and sees that he is meditating in the forest. And he mentions that he has 76 skeleton warriors now. And attributes have increased to 2300 or 2300. He then says it is too bad I can't increase the skill of my skeleton warriors. We then hear, Lin Bo Yu. And it is Xiao Shui. And she says, what is your level now? He is kind of shocked to see that Xiao Shui just came out of the dungeon. He says level 14. And our girl is literally taken aback by our boy's infinite risk. Just kidding. But she asks how he is so fast. She has become level 11. Which honestly guys, it's, it's actually not too shabby. It's actually pretty impressive for a rare elemental mage. And not a super giga chat like her MC. To reach level 11. And that's still really impressive. For a normal mage like her. When it comes to comparing her to our MC. She says my party is so exhausted after clearing the dungeon two times. And they barely got to level 11. She says in the beginner dungeon, he was level 7 and she was level 5. And how is it that she is level 11 now and he is level 14? She then leaves and turns her back on him. And of course she says, I will let myself lose to you. He says, didn't she just come out? Why is she looking for another party to enter again? And then he says, don't tell me she doesn't have cooldowns. An hour later, she says, Level 11 and low mental mage, I'm looking for a party. And she says one time isn't enough, she needs to do it more. We then see the others look at her, and Lin Mo Yu says in his head, She is too competitive, I can't find any opportunity to ask. One hour later, our boy is literally just sitting here, just enjoying the lo-fi ASMR in the forest probably, and she is on the ground and she says, I won't lose to you. Lin Mo Yu is just like, you've got to be kidding. We then hear, Clearing the Shihai dungeon. We're missing a mage here. Over here, I'm a level, a level elemental mage. And then a half an hour later, she is sitting on the ground. And yes, we gotta keep that part censored. Sorry, guys. And then she says she's exhausted. And now that she's level 12, she can catch up to her boy soon. He says to her, aren't you tired? And then she says, I don't even want to move a finger. But it's because of her competitive spirit that she is literally just trying to keep up with our boy. He says just because of that, and then she asks, Why? You still have the face to ask me that? After being overshadowed by you for so many years, I'll definitely surpass you this time. And then he says, If I had known earlier, I would have given her the first place. Our boy got that unintentional riz. She's then looking up to the sky and the stars, and she says, Of course it's not just that. I want to get into Shajing Academy too as well, and aren't you going there too? He says you should be at least level 15 to take the test for Xiaojing Academy and level 16 to be more secured. And at her speed now, getting into level 15 is going to be so difficult. And then he says you should clear the nightmare level. You'll level up faster that way. She then looks at him like, are you kidding me bruh? Are you joking? Elite parties are difficult to join because they are looking for level 16 and 17 professionals. And a level 12 like me won't even get recruited. And she explains that's why she can only clear the normal one. And it shouldn't be a problem for her to reach level 14 if she works hard. And even level 15 won't be hard. He then says as he looks at her, with real sincerity in his heart, How are you able to ignore the dungeon cooldown times? And it seems that she might have an advantage on him. 
She says, you don't know? He says, so you do have something that you don't know, huh? And she says, I'll tell you if you say please. And then she says, they say that a mage's thoughts are the most brightest. But here you are being a dummy as she gives him something in her hand. She says here, this is a cooldown item. It's the item that lets me reset the dungeon cooldown. We find out it is a beginner cooldown talisman. And it has been used 3 out of 10 times. He says, I can't believe there's something like this too. And he is quite shocked by this. He asks, is this quite expensive? And she says, yes, it should be quite expensive. Her father looked quite sad when he passed this on to her. And she said, looks like I won't be able to make use of this talisman. He then mentions, but I need to use all 7 chances in 2 days. And plus her own cooldowns, she needs to clear the dungeon at least 9 more times before she can get to level 15. She is exhausted, and her boy Lin Mo Yu notices this. He then says, I can party up with you, and that way you'll definitely reach level 15, and you won't have to do anything. And then she says, why did I forget this guy can solo clear a dungeon? And she says, there's more experience if two people clear the dungeon. What's more, she won't even have to do anything. She gives a smile, and she says, I'll take you up on the offer. You'll party up with me, and we'll share the cooldown talisman. He then says, you should rest two hours, as we see her on the ground, and she says, yeah, I'm going to take a nap. She then wakes up, and they're at the entrance. She says, two hours flies by so quickly, and she still stretches because she had just woken up. He clicks on it, boom, and it seems that he used the nightmare level, and she is shocked by this. She says the monster's attributes are so high, and this is clearly the nightmare level, and she asks if he chose the wrong level. He then has a wisdom robe on, and he just says, Stick close to me, Mama Sita. I'm just kidding, that sounded kind of corny, but he said, just stick close to me. She is then near to him, and she says, but he'll definitely make fun of me if I run away now. And then he says, walk faster. Don't tell me you are scared. We then see, why aren't you attacking? And then he says, the monsters aren't dealing any damage to his skeletons. And she wonders what exactly he is doing. We then see the white wolf from earlier, and she says, this is the Wolf King in Nightmare level. It's twice bigger than the normal one. And then he uses Corpse Explosion because he says, it's a waste of time if I fight it like before. And using Corpse Explosion to kill them immediately will save him a lot of time. Boom. Killed level 14 Mind Guard. 1100 XP acquired and he killed two of them. She says her experience instantly went up by 30. She says, what the heck is this? You can clear a dungeon just like that? And she says... It's literally dead just like that. And then she mentions, My party of three suffered for 20 minutes just to kill the wolf king. But it died in less than a minute here. And then he says, Let's go. And then she wonders if he has been clearing nightmare level all this time. She says, If I hadn't seen it in person, I would have never believed it. A professional below level 20 solo clearing a nightmare level dungeon. She then says, It hasn't been 10 minutes since we entered the dungeon. And we're already facing the boss. She says her previous parties needed at least an hour so that they can get to the end. But then the final boss was also killed in one hit and her boy reaches level 15. She is like, you leveled up again to 15? And she says the difference between us is getting bigger. And she is on the ground and she is like, what do you know? A longsword. It's not too bad because it's not a staff. She then says the Goblin King Scepter is the strongest mage weapon here before level 20. And even though there's some in the trade market, I don't want to ask my father for money. And so she picks up the Golden King Spectre. And then he says to her to keep it. She asks, why don't you want to use it? He says, I have this and I don't like Spectres too. And he is referring to the book that he has in his hand. It is the Goblin King's magic. She then says, I've never seen him take out the magic book. And maybe it's too insignificant of an item to use. We then see him by the corpse. And he says, as expected. Gathering the monsters together and using Corpse Explosion is the faster way, and he uses the equipment Goblin King's magic book, Intelligence Roll. He then crouches down and he says, Sorry, but you'll have to die like five more times. She then asks, Why are you talking to the boss? It's not like it understands you. He says, I just want to say it. It's not important whether it can understand me or not. Our boy is just bullying the monsters at this point. She then looks back at him while he was about to leave and she says, who the heck would say sorry to the boss that seriously? Isn't the boss just there for it to kill? And then she looks at him, and then she thinks in her head with a vision behind her. 
what a weird person, but he's kinda cute. He then looks back and says, let's go out and continue, come on. And she says, all right. The second clear, and boom, it's easy. The third, the fourth, the fifth, and boom. We then see she is now level 14 and she says, we still have one and a half days before the big exam and we can clear the dungeon two or more times. And she says, idiot Lin, are you also going to be leveling up again? And then he says, if I can reach level 15, then passing the exam will be easy. He says, yeah. And we see that he's almost close to level 16. She then asks why. Are you becoming to become the champion? He says champion. She, she explains, you'll get a lot of points for being the champion. And the most important thing is, you get the chance to enter the creation seminary. And that's extremely useful in the Shaojing Academy. She asks, what is the creation seminary? She says, I heard from your father that the creation seminary is the best of the best in the country. And if the Xiaojing Academy is filled with talented elites, then the creation seminary is filled with talented ones at the pinnacle of power. And we see them standing on top of some sort of building and they see it to be very menacing and a menacing group as well. She says, I heard that senior Su Shan Jin is inside and he's the only one from Shihai City. She then looks happy and she says, I think you have the chance to become the second one. And if you can enter, I bet Principal Lu will even smile in his dreams. And then she says, this guy's clearing method has never been seen before. And he has completely refreshed my understanding. If he can't enter the seminary, then who the heck else can? He says, my sister is at Shajing Academy, so he must be admitted as well. He then says, if there's a chance for the creation seminary, he has to try it out. And then she says, hey, isn't that Gao Yang? And we see, Gao Yan is a level 11 knight. And of course, it is our boy Lin Mo Yu's close, close friend. And then he tells our girl Xia Shui to bring him along to the dungeon. We are then inside some sort of office, and we hear somebody yelling. And he says, did your brain get eaten by a dog? Why the heck do you think of restricting dungeons? Do you think the country and the association are just there for decoration? And if you want to die, don't drag the guild on with you. And this guy has a ring on his finger. And he says, stay in the guild and don't go anywhere for the time being. Anyway, you're already level 16, so you should wait patiently for the exam to start. He then asks, what do we do about Xiaoji and the rest? And then the guy, the old guy just says, I already sent people to investigate. You don't need to bother with this anymore. And for this person to be able to make several people disappear without a trace, his strength is much more than you can imagine. And then he says, so there is somebody who would dare stand against the dynasty guild huh and yeah heck yeah there is and it is our boy lin mo yu with his friends xia shui gao yang and of course the skeleton army we then see gao yang and he is looking for xia shui and mo yu but they're both behind him he then gives it a really menacing smirk or a smile and he says the both of you are on a date and then she is like shut up or i'll rip you apart he then laughs and says, I was only joking, so don't mind me. She then says, don't look for a party anymore. Just come with us once the cooldown ends. She also says with her arms crossed like a Sigma female, we'll be definitely bringing you to level 12 before the exam. He is like, really? And then he looks like a little cute anime dude. And then he says, the both of you are my saviors. And he also says that he needs to get to level 12 if he wants to go to the academy. He then literally bows down and says, Don't worry, Miss Xia. I will listen and follow your every order. She then says, If you continue acting like this, we're not helping you anymore. He then mentions, If you ask me head east, I will definitely head east. And if you ask me to play dead, I will actually play dead. Our boy really is just too funny. She then says, Shut up, as she releases some fire in the palm of her hand. He says, I shall obey. But how long more until your cooldowns reset? She then says 10 hours and she puts away the fire in her hand. He then says, all right, then I'll take a rest first and he'll go and hunt some other monsters. And then he just says, I wish you the best, Mo Yu, and I'm cheering you on. Sooner or later, you'll get Sha Shuhei. But then there is a fireball and it is literally headed towards Gao Yang as he tries to run away from Sha Shuhei. He then says, very angrily, that Gao Yang is so annoying 
He definitely deserves this. And then our boy Lin Mo Yu just says, he just likes to tease, just cut him some slack. 10 hours later, we seem to be in the dungeon. And then Gao Yang asks, Boss Lin, Miss Xia, did you guys pick the wrong difficulty? Why is it Nightmare? As we see them, and the Nightmare mode is selected. She then says, don't ask many questions and just follow along from the back. He then says, finally, looks like it's not only me who will react like that. Because we all know that Xia Shui was like the same as Gao Yang and they are about to be transported into the rift. We are now in the rift. And then Gao Yang is like, this is nightmare difficulty. I'm dead if I even get a scratch. And she is like, why are you sticking so close to me? You are a knight. You're the one that's supposed to be protecting me. Just at that moment, we see corpse explosion. And our boy Lin Mo Yu has already literally annihilated the monster in front of them. And he's wearing his cool robe. Gao Yang is like, what? That's the boss in nightmare difficulty. And we see the orc goblin just on the floor passed out. He is like, it died just like that? A boss that even a party of 10 would find hard to defeat? She just says, it's nothing to be surprised of. Of course, it's our MC of the Manma. I mean, it's our boy Lin Mo Yu. He then hugs onto his leg and he says, Boss, Lin Mo Yu, please bring me along when you clear other dungeons in the future. And then she says, Can you act at least like a knight and have some backbone instead of being a coward like this? And then he sweats and says, What's the point of acting like a knight? With boss around, what's a knight supposed to do? Honestly, he's right. What do you need to do when you have an OP necromancer? He then says, let go of me, I'll bring you along in the future. And then he also mentions that one more dungeon and he'll be level 16. And Shashui will reach level 15 and Gao Ye, level 12. He says you're the pest and they get transported once more. He then says, after this, it'll be the exam. And as we see him here, he has gotten serious because he knows that this is a huge thing. We then see some people on top of a wall. And they say the children should be returning, right? And then it is, of course, the president, as well as some girl in a hood. And then she says, it's already the exam tomorrow. I wonder how things will turn out. And then a guy wearing some sort of robe, I guess, with some cool looking shades, though, says, Old Lu, I heard that the two geniuses from our school are aiming for Xia Jing Academy. And of course, our president Lu Yun or the principal says, yes. They are both going for Jiajing Academy, and according to the previous year's standard, only those at level 15 will have a greater chance, and those at level 16 will surely make it in. However, he also mentions it is difficult, because level 15 is already hard, but level 16 is way too difficult. And in Shihai City, other than Su Qianxing, only Lin Mo Yu's sister has ever attained level 16 before it. And then he says, one is Lin Mo Han's brother, and the other is the pride of the Xia family. Perhaps the both of them will create miracles. And the guy with shade says, Somebody is here. We then see, It is Zhu Zhen, and he is a swordsman, and he is level 12. They say, That's somebody from our school. And they are like, Level 12, not bad, and it is as expected of some of the talents from their school. We then see Wan Meng, who seems to be some sort of goth girl with short hair, and she has a bow behind her with some weird looking leaf arrows or I don't know what that is. But she is an eagle eye archer and she is level 15. And honestly guys, I think that this is a pretty cool profession to be an archer. Well, hopefully she doesn't get wrecked like the guy that our boy Lin Mo Yu faced earlier. The guy on the left says, she's level 13, a level higher than your student. And the girl or the lady on the right says, huh, levels do not determine anything. The important results are in the exam. And Principal Lu Yun is just like these two old men trying to look good, but everyone is about the same. No one above level 14 has appeared yet. We then see the doves going towards the north to migrate. And then one of them asks, Sha Shui, Lin Mo Yu, and Gao Ye, why haven't they appeared yet? She says the three of them should be here. And then they wonder and speculate. Don't tell me something has happened to them. We then see the three of them. They are walking as the sun is setting and they really think that they are Naruto, Hinata, and Sasuke. I'm just kidding guys, but they look pretty cool here as well. We then see the principal is like, yes, they are finally here. It's good that they are back safe. 
because he was kind of nervous that they would be injured. He then wonders what their levels are. We see Gao Ye. He is a level 12 sword shield knight. And Sha Shui is a level 15 elemental mage. The girl or two of the ladies are like, that girl really reached level 15. And then Principal Lu Yun is like, which means she has an 80% chance of getting into Sha Jing Academy. And the guy on his right says, Old Lu, you must be really proud. But then we see Lin Mo Yu, Necromancer, level 16. The three of them are shocked, and they're like, level 16? That's crazy. Even the principal is just having a Giga Chat face on. The guy on the right says, they must have cleared the dungeons nonstop and look at their weapons. He says the sword shield in Gao Yang's hand and Xia Shui's scepter are both weapons from the Goblin King. And the drop rates are extremely low, so it is almost impossible to get the weapons from the same set. They say, it looks like they've been working hard. They are about to head on the bus, and the principal tells Gao Yang, You guys get on the bus first, we'll send you back to school. Once everyone has gathered, and Gao Yang is like, Frick yeah dude, let's go! And then the principal says in his head, It's time to get back at those fools. We then see our boy Lin Mo Yu looking at the glass window and he says, Rest well tonight. Tomorrow we will gather in school and head to the examination site together. And it's a flashback from the principal. Lin Mo Yu says since he's level 16, he is confident that he can get accepted into Xia Jing Academy. And now that he looks at it, he can definitely try to get first place and aim at the creation seminary, which will be really beneficial for his growth. The next day, we then see our boy Lin Mo Yu, his profession necromancer, level 16 at 8%, and all of his stats have reached a really good number, and he has 100 skeletons now, and their attributes have reached 2500 or 2500, and our boy is in peak condition. We then see the equipment that he has. He has a Goblin King's magic book, and he has 100 out of 160 skeleton warriors. He also has the general blessings, Damage Transfer, Soul Blaze, Summon Skill Skeleton Warriors, and of course, one of the coolest abilities is Corpse Explosion. We then see Boss Lin, and of course, it is our boy Gao Ye. The girl Sha Shui looks behind and she notices that Lin Mo Yu has arrived. She asks, are you confident to Lin Mo Yu, to which he says, yeah, and her boy just has his hands in his pocket. Our boy really think that he is of course Song Jin Wu. Well, they are kind of the same. We then see Sha Shui and she says, Let's meet at the Jia Jing Academy. And she looks very happy and optimistic. And he just says, Alright. We then see them holding a stone. And it is a teleportation stone. And the principal Lu says, This is a teleportation stone. Break it or use spirit on it to get to the exam site. He also mentions, Let me reiterate once again. Prioritize your safety first during the exam. Because your life is more important. And guys, why would their lives be at risk at the exam? Something fishy might be coming. We are then at the Jian Ning Provincial Exam Center. And Lin Mo Yu says, Looks like there is over 10,000 people there. Holy cow guys, that is a lot. We are at the trial tower. And it has been activated. And it seems to have vibrated or collapsed or something. We then see the thing shine or open up. And it says, please listen to the rules carefully. No sound allowed. No questions allowed. Failure to comply will be met with immediate disqualification. One of the guys then says, no questions allowed. And then the guy behind him says, then what if you don't understand something? We then hear, rules violated, disqualified. And the two of them are literally just sent away. Gao Ye is like, what the heck? And Lin Mo Yu is like, that guy seems to at least be smart enough. And he's talking to Gao Yang. And come on, don't disrespect Gao Yang, man. We then see five figures on a tower. And then we hear the trial tower will give different trials to different professionals. And the main battle types will be given battle tests. We then see a red ogre looking Hulk monster thing. That's a Super Saiyan 1000 with his white hair. And it lets out a roar. We find out the support types will be given various situations. And we see a body sort of being risen up with a red gem on top of him. And we also see 
After clearing the basic trial, you will be given three levels to choose from. Normal level, nightmare level, and hell level. Different difficulty levels will give you different results, and ultimately, you guys will get different points. We then see the points changing from the system, and it says the points are your results for the exam, and you can use them inside the various academies that you will enter. And in the academies, points are even more valuable than gold coins. We then see the X-Men badge as well as a book, and then it says, finally, you can use any equipment on hand right now, and you cannot use items and your storage space will be sealed. And I don't know who this is, but this looks like a literal low-key GigaChat version, but I don't know what he has to do with any of this. The system says, those who violate the rules will be disqualified, and all students, queue up now to enter the tower. Lin Mo Yu is literally in line and he says, if the Jiangging province already has as many people taking the exam, then the number of examinees in the whole country right now is probably over a million. And then he says, looks like I was right. And the trial tower is the same as a dungeon, and they'll be sent to different places according to their profession. And we see the two people beside him, and they are also about to be transported to another place. And they seem to be also legendary classes. Butterboy Lin Mo Yu is there, rocking his necromancer green. We then see, is that the new profession the Shihai City has reported, necromancer? From the information they gave, it should be a summoning type mage. And they hope that this new profession won't disappoint them. And it seems like that Loki guy from earlier is besides some other scary looking dudes and it seems that they are also hunters. These guys look pretty OP and I wonder how they would be against our boy Lin Mo Yu when he's stronger. They then say, let's classify him as a rare mage first and send mage type monsters two levels higher than him. And then we see our boy Lin Mo Yu and he is eager to get the party started. He is then standing in front of this monster which seems to have a lion face with the body of an old desert traveler. And he says, mage type monsters. We then see the task in front of him. It is a wolf orc mage. And the countdown. Three, two. And then he says, that light around the monster isn't allowing him to see its level and attributes. And then the countdown reaches zero. He then puts his hand up. And then he says, soul blaze. And he also mentions that it doesn't matter if he doesn't see his attributes. Boom. We then see the monster literally twirling around. And the Loki looking dude is like, Nani? Because our boy Lin Mo Yu has defeated it. And the time taken was 0.1 seconds. It was an instant kill. And our boy Lin Mo Yu just stands there. Unfazed. Our boy really is the king of the Riz. I mean... The King of the Necromancers. We are in the Trial Tower Monitor Room and we see Ning Xuan Feng, one of the main examiners. One of them asks why Master Ning was here and he replies, There's a new profession, so he wants to see it. The guy at the monitor says, What should we do? He killed the monster instantaneously and we can't judge the ability of the class. The guy looking then says, Necromancer, is it? If rare profession difficulty cannot test his strength, do it again with legendary profession difficulty. And the guy is like, hold up, isn't this a bit unfair? Master Ning then says, it's fine, it says it's an instant kill for the first time and we'll give him 100 marks. And if he passes the second round, they'll give him 1,000. We then see him facing this kind of hunched back over monster with some branches coming out from his back. The system says, please enter the second exam and kill the monster ahead. It is a wolf beast man mage and it is a level 20. He uses soul blaze and another instant kill. They are surprised because is it another legendary class? And then Ning says, no need for further testing, just enter the second round of exams. We then hear combat profession examinees, the first round is over, attended examinees 10,632, and only 5,000 people passed. As Lin Mo Yu just looks up in the air, they are now announcing the results. We then see Sha Shui looking at the leaderboard, and we see Lin Mo Yu, 0.15 seconds for the kill, and 100 points, and Sha Shui is in third place. She's like, what the heck? How did he get 0.1 seconds? Isn't that ridiculous? And she says she won't surrender. Some guy also gets mad, and he says, the first place should have been me. I'm not even in the top three. 
0.1 seconds, that's impossible. Lin Mo Yu is just there like Saitama and he wonders if he went too far. You then get a system notification and it says combat profession, second round begins. Examinations can choose the difficulty. They also say that the second round of exams might cause injuries, so do not overmeasure yourself. If you face any dangers, you can shout forfeit and your exams will end and your results will be taken. We then see, of course, the difficulties here. There is a 30 minute time period. Normal monster with an ordinary skull is 1 point, Nightmare monster score is 3 points, and Hellish monster score with literal barbed wires on the skull is 5 points. Lin Mo Yu says, looks like we are competing, we can kill more monsters in 30 minutes. We then see Wang Si Hao, the level 16 rage warrior, and he says killing a hell level monster is equal to killing 5 normal ones, and even if he got first place in the first round, he'll never beat me this round. Sha Shui then says, elemental mages are not adept at close combat, nor at high difficulty single combat, but they win in quantity. And then we see one of the Kafka girls from earlier. And she says that Rage Warrior counts as powerful class even with rare professions. Elemental mages can do excellent burst damage, but of course they aren't good at close combat. So Shashui is smart for picking normal difficulty. However, a diver is a rare profession of the assassin class, extremely powerful at close combat, nightmare or hellish difficulty are good ones. We then see, of course, back in the training room, and the guy in armor says, I wonder what difficulty that Lin Moyu will choose. And then somebody's like, Hey, get out the way, don't squish me. We then see Lin Mo Yu and he's ready to pick his option. The round of exams tests our sustained combat ability. Persisting for 30 minutes is not a simple task. He chose hellish difficulty. And we see him here, just standing like an alpha male. The lady in the purple cloak next to President Lu Yun then says, Oh Lu, you hit the jackpot. Two of the top three are your students. And then the other guy says, if Lin Mo Yu becomes a provincial champion, you're going to go to heaven, which means basically you're going to rise to great places. We see Wolf Beastman Warrior Elite, level 13, and his strength is 500 and the rest are above 100. He then says this element is too weak. He then has his hand glow up with his aura, and he says go, and he's talking to his summons. He says if that makes sense, that the monsters are too strong, it will eliminate most of the examinees. We then see a skeleton warrior and guys. Do you guys see his stats? Literally 2500 for all of it and he's only level 16. He says it's too easy as he slaughters them. And then he says a second monster appears 5 seconds after killing the first one. So two skeletons are enough. Of course, even Ning, the person from earlier, the master, is like what the heck? This is stronger than any summon from all the summoner classes they have seen. And he can even summon two of them. And he says that this class is stronger than he thought. We see Wang Zi Hao and he says, come on, let's go. And then they say that he's giving it everything he has without considering his stamina. But even he is slightly behind Sha Shue. And guys, we see literally Lin Mo Yu on the ground and he is relaxing. And it seems like he has a potato. They then said, mark him down, let him be remembered forever. And they wonder if the exam is too easy for him. Ningshan Feng then rubs his beard and says, This you lad is interesting. And then we hear, it's finally over. Wang Zihao is super happy because he has killed 50 monsters in the hellish difficulty, which isn't simple, which honestly guys, we have to give some respect for, so props to him. He then says, this time, first place should be mine. Second round of exams are now over. 5,220 examinees, this round and 2,780 wounded and forfeited the exam. We then see Wang Zihao's eyes glow up orange and he is ready for the scoreboard. The remaining 2,440 examinees can choose to forfeit or enter the next round. We then see Lin Mo Yu, total score 1,605, Zhu Mei 470, Sha Shui 270, and even Wang Zihao is only 265. Our boy is sweating so much and he is just in shock. He says a monster spawn rate is 1 monster per 5 seconds, so 12 monsters a minute at most, and every monster gives 5 points, so the maximum score in 30 minutes is 1800. He then analyzes and remembers that he must have killed 301 monsters, and he wonders why he doesn't need time to kill them. We then hear the people around the President Lu, they say, your student is so powerful, and he is literally, 
he's literally shaking with his left hand, but with his right hand, he says, calm down. Our boy is literally nervous with excitement. Baby below him says, that's amazing. The talented Su Kai Shan from years ago obtained 700 score this round, and Lin Mohan obtained 650. We then see the third trial. Exam time is still half an hour, 30 minutes, and they'll be facing a boss level monster. Normal level 100, Nightmare 300, and Hellish. 500. Of course, Lin Mo Yu just clicks Hellish. He then says in his head, this time is a boss level single combat, which is to test the limits of their individual strength. And the boss is Wolf Beastman Captain. Of course, he is level 15. Strength 1000, Agility 800, Spirit 500, Constitution 1000. And his skill, it sounds kind of cool guys, it's Wild Wind Slash. And honestly, these stats aren't even as strong as his level 10 skeleton, let alone his level 16. And this guy looks pretty pretty scary, but he still gets soloed. He says it cannot even compare to the elite monsters in Shihai Mines. And he understands that the Empire wouldn't actually release such a hellish level monster. He then tells the skeletons to go, and he says he's still disappointed because there are five rounds of exams, and he hopes the final two can provide him with some real challenges. Of course, we see Wang Xi Hao, and he's filled with rage, and he says, kill. We see Xiao Shui in a dress for some reason. I guess there is no dress code for this tournament, and she has a fire in her head, and she is fighting off this boss. We then see the goth girl, and she seems to be invisible, which is from her class, a diver. And then we see... Rage shot. Another instant kill, and it used a skill? What kind of summon monster in this? And again, Lin Mo Yu has went too far. Of course, Ning Shan Feng and the other instructors are like, what the heck? We haven't even measured his real strength. And then he says, wait for the fifth round. If he wants to be the provincial champion, he must pass the fifth round. He then says, I don't even believe the fifth round can measure his true strength. We then see the sap board once again. Lin Mo Yu. Total score, 2,105. Shao Shui, 770. Wang Xihao, 765. Zhu Mei, 970. And even Gao Yang is here at 670 with a score of 302. So respect to our holy knight here, guys. Let's go. Let's get some justice for Gao Yang. We then see, next up is the fourth round of the exams. The fourth round will greatly increase the difficulty and so will the danger. And you can still choose to forfeit and we see a shadow of some sort of hell boss. Of course, Wang Zihao says, This is my chance. Bring it on. And then we hear with your current results, entering the Empire's top 100 academies is no longer an issue. As nobody chooses to forfeit, we will respect your choices as we see some floating rocks of some sort with all the people standing on them. They then explain the rules of the fourth round. They will face 10 waves of attack monsters. And that, there will be 10 monsters in each wave. 100 monsters in total. And the next wave of monsters will appear no matter if you wipe the previous or not. And that the last wave will be led by a boss level monster. You pass by killing them all. And that each one gives you 10 marks. And we see Shashue here. Holding her pretty cool looking scepter with a red ball in the center. And I'm guessing this is of blood or something precious, of course. We then see the boss monsters and they're all lined up, ready to go. We see, let's see how you handle this. The best way to deal with a summoner is to eliminate the summoner himself. And they wonder if Lin Mo Yu will panic this time. And then Ning Shang Fen is like, I think this round of tests will still not challenge him. And they just look at him really confused. He then loads up something in his head and summons, of course, a summons, saying, stretch your bones, my warriors, and I'm pretty sure that the enemies are screwed. Three skeletons should be enough, as we look at them already attacking the beasts. Soul Blaze, he uses it on the monsters, and I'm pretty sure their soul will really be set ablaze. No Demon Slayer reference though, guys. We then see him, or the monster being literally eaten by the spire as he roars out in pain. The three examiners are like, what the heck? This man has summoned a third monster. Why didn't he use it before and summon it now? And they say, why does he like hiding so much stuff? That guy is such a show off. He then begins to yawn saying, this exam is so uneventful. Even the Shihai minds are better than this. 
No surprise at all. The guy with crystals or gems or shards floating around his head and his shoulders then says this isn't interesting. There's nothing exciting about this kid. You might as well watch the others. And they say, yeah, yeah. I guess our boy is so OP, it's making it bored to watch. We see Shashue on the path of fire. And then she says, area of effect attacks our elemental mage's strong unit. So she can do this. We then see Wang Si Hao, who is a rage warrior. And he's literally raging, as I guess that's part of his class. We see the other people watching it on the big screen from outside. And they're like, Lin Mo Yu is amazing. His skeletons instantly killed the monster the moment it appeared. Some of them say that there are too many monsters for them to kill, so it's a good thing that they forfeited. I guess they're cowards. Just kidding. We see Gao Yang, and he held on until the sixth wave of monsters. And he says, Lin Mo Yu is my boss. He's so amazing. Let me tell you about the time he soloed a nightmare level dungeon. And they're like, soloed a nightmare level dungeon? And they begin to be skeptical. We see four of the contestants left, and this is an awesome panel, I don't know about you guys, as we see Shashue, Wang Zihao, the goth girl, and the other guy from the other district. And then we see Lin Mo Yu just eating on his sweet potato, literally just chilling. He says that this Feng Shui guy is finally showing his true strength, and he was the other guy in the four panels. We then see he is a level 15 sacred swordsman. He came from the swordsman line of Feng family. So he knows that the final two rounds are important to increasing the scores. We see Wang Zihao is going to go berserk and our boy literally looks like a villain here, which I think he eventually will become, unless Lin Mo Yu somehow uses the power of friendship to make him his friend, but I don't think that's happening. We see that for 5 minutes, strength and constitution increases by 500% and it decreases agility by 200 seconds. Once the effect ends, you enter a state of weakness for 30 minutes. We then see as he unleashes his attacks. And then, of course, Lin Mo Yu's just saying in his head, it's finally the last wave of monsters. The fourth round of exam ends. Five examinees have passed. The results are as followed as we see this Thor-looking dude say it. Lin Mo Yu, score is 3,605. Zhu Mei, 2,470. Shashui 2,270, Wang Xihao 2,265, and Feng Shu 2,200. Only five people have passed. There's only five people left after the fourth round. Will someone really pass the fifth? As we see the others just under the forest watching it happen. They say if the fourth round is that hard, they can't imagine the difficulty of the fifth. We see Wang Zihao and he says with his sword on his ground keeping it up that as expected the fifth round is where we truly decide the victor. Shao Shui is literally injured with some bruises on her shoulders and her neck and she says I'm in the top five. There should be no problem entering Shajing Academy right? And then we see the goth girl and she says Shajing Academy here I come. We then see some sort of figure which is a Loki guy with his purple eyes saying I know all of you wish to enter Shajing Academy, but don't think you can rest easy after entering the top 5. You will still be eliminated if you do not perform well enough in the 5th round, and do your best to earn scores if you want to enter. It's finally here, and we see the iconic rivalry, Sha Shui and Lin Mo Yu, and they are about to announce the rules for this 5th round. All of you will be teleported into a special space, the campaign space. The campaign space will continuously spawn all sorts of monsters in large numbers, and it will be over a hundred in the first wave. Oh gosh, guys. It contains elite class, leader class, and even bosses. And the faster you kill, the faster the monster spawns. And the faster you become stronger, which is good for Lin Mo Yu. We see them right here, and they look ten times more menacing than the ones from before. And this is actually, probably, instantly a hell difficulty. The campaign space is split into five different phases. Each phases have a different score. Only the examinees can see the rules for the scores. Not even the examiner knows them. And after entering the campaign space, all the examiners can see is a change of your score. As we see, the bunch of rocks with some formations come on top of them. If you have any hidden cards, use them now. First phase, monster level 15, and after each kill is 50. 
Second phase, level 16 after each kill 100. 17 for the third phase, 200 after each kill. Fourth phase, 18, each kill 400. And fifth phase, level 19 monsters and 800 points per kill. Also, by the way, guys, these stat windows are pretty cool. It has like those cool gems and like the ancient stone thing. So I just wanted to put that on there. We see Lin Mo Yu and he says, I could feel the aura of death filled to the brim here. Looks like there was an unimaginable battle that occurred. As we see the battlefield with literal lightning there. And Lin Mo Yu just stands there with his summons. Is this to prepare us for the feeling of a battlefield? And it looks very similar to one. So I'm pretty sure he's right. We see the furry beastman, they're level 15, and they let out an ore. Just level, and it doesn't say the skills or the attributes. And he wonders if that roar is summoning comrades with it. But he then looks up, and then we see it didn't die instantly. And he says it looks like the constitution or defense is high. And if it didn't die in a single strike, <laughs> then two will do. Corpse burst. Boom. It explodes. And we see... That his score went up by 500 at once. And of course the examiners are just shocked. Because he instant killed 10 first phase monsters. He says since they will attract comrades with their roar. It's good to keep some of them alive. And that they will come here. And we see him literally in his head. Our boy cut the Rasengan. But it seemed like the Necromancer version. We then see the corpse disappearing. And he wonders if it can only exist around 10 seconds. And so he needs to change the plan. He brings more than six summons out. And then he says nine skeletons attract all the monsters left over together. And they start to run towards them. Slash. Slash. He then says aggressive drawn. And he uses corpse burst once more. We then see. What the heck? What is this dude Linwo you're doing? We can't see anything. His score is at 8,505. And they say that it went up by 4,500. In literally an instant. And they think that he wiped up the first hundred monsters. Which is definitely true. We then see Ning Xuan Feng and he says while sweating in his little cool old style armor. What kind of profession is a necromancer? Where are his limits? We then see him still wearing his robe of wisdom. Saying do I need to wait a minute for the monster to spawn in again? But then just at that moment he looks up and there are fireballs crashing down. We then see the fireballs going to crash the skeletons who are in front of him or behind him. And he lets them block the attack. And all of them literally pile up and make a mountain of bones, literally. Boom. It is Spire Rain. And that is the furry beastmen mages and they are level 16. And they seem to be on top of a mountain. He then looks back, saying it finally spawned. Is it my turn now? And that is the end of the chapter. We see the crocodile creatures with their spears and they're running towards the skeletons. The skeletons have their swords and they're ready for battle. We see one jump up and we see Lin Mo Yu behind the lines as he is controlling them. Slash. He then uses corpse explosion and we see the corpses literally get incinerated and burnt to a crisp. We then see his points have reached 14,605. The score went up again by 6,000 which meant... He killed 120 monsters at a single moment. We then see he has AoE attacks even though his summon monsters are so powerful already. So his area of effect is pretty OP. We see the Loki dude, the guy with crystals around him, and the person in the white cloak here. And they're literally just shocked. They then begin to say, I wonder if this class surpassed legendary classes. And it means that he can stand up against those few classes. And we see some sort of mummy there. He says we can't say yet. Being powerful in low levels doesn't mean it will stay the same when the level increases. So let's observe a little more. Lin Mo Yu says the aura of death increased. And he wonders if this is phase 2. He says there are at least 40 beast men packs scattered around. And we see an image of them. And they are shrouded in mystery. We see the furry beast men archer at level 16. And a furry beast men warrior at level 16. He says the levels of monsters increased. And their numbers doubled. And judging by the difficulty, other professions will have a hard time phasing too. And it will take them a lot of time either way. But that doesn't really apply to him. So he doesn't need to worry, just like the cool MC he is. He mentions that in the history of Shen Xia exams, 
there is only one profession from a century ago that passed phase three in the campaign. We then see them murmuring and gossiping, and he says, I think Lin Mo Yu has a high chance too. He is literally overpowered, and he suspects he has awakened an ultimate talent. We then see them in the lab, and they start to say if he does awaken a talent, that means that's great news to humankind, and that if a genius who awakened his talent not long after unlocking his profession, maybe he'll awaken a new talent when he undergoes a second unlock, which I think is pretty mysterious. They then say professions with talent are extremely rare, and dual talents are one in a million, and this could be one in ten million. Lin Mo Yu total score, 34,605. Sha Shui, our girl, has 7,270, and Fang Shu has a total score of 6,200. They then mention, look, Lin Mo Yu entered phase two, 100 scores a monster. He instantly killed 200 monsters once again, and they're literally like, what the heck is going on now? They say they were just gifting him marks now. If it wasn't because I don't have rights, I'll send a couple dozen bosses at him. We are then seeing the Sha Jing. It is the Shen Xia Empire capital, and there's a floating building here, and this looks like a pretty cool city, but I also think it's like Photoshop. But anyway, we then see it is a trial tower real location. What are the three divine towers of the Shen Xia Empire? And this looks pretty cool like a missile, but it's actually a temple. We see a rat looking up at it. This gotta be a funny picture. He says outrageous as we see somebody's hand begin to form. We hear, Kiki, you can't stop me. And we see a real evil monster that looks like a predator. And it has two big red and bulging eyes. We then see an attack. And it seems that the person in the hand is catching it. He says, you seek death, huh? And then the gold hand grabs a monster. And then the monster says, this is just a clone. Kill it all you want. And those children in the trial tower are going to die. He laughs, but then the hand crushes him. And then they say, I never thought that those dudes from the abyss would dare to commit a sneak attack. That evil light speed is too fast, and it came prepared. And their goal is the children in the campaign space. We then see some shadows with some golden aura around them. And he says, those sneaky brats. They really came from the abyss and sneaked inside and disturbed the space inside. The power of the abyss is polluting the rules. And he says the ground within the tower was taken from abyss soil. So it is advantageous to them. And this guy seems to let out a really cool heavenly looking aura from his hands. And then we see one of them. How long does it take to correct this? And this guy looks pretty freaking cool. His name is Bai Yu Yuan. A Shenxia Empire top level expert. And then the guy under him says, One hour. We hear... What's going on? Why did the monsters disappear all of a sudden? And Lin Mo Yu is literally just standing there with his awesome robe, just unfazed. He then sees Sha Shui, and she's like, Wood-headed Lin? Oh gosh, she really has time to roast them in a time like this. He says, what happened to the campaign space? Why can the examinees meet each other? She says as she's holding her red scepter, I was killing monsters and it suddenly disappeared. Do you know what happened? He says, I don't know. And then we see Wang Zi Hao, and then he gets teleported as well. And he is like, what the heck is going on here, dude? We then see children. I am Bai Yi Yuan. And then she is like, or Sha Shui is like, what the heck? Is that really Bai? Is Bai really here, the legendary master? We then see, of course, Ning Xuan Feng. And he's like, why is Bai here? Did something happen in the campaign space? He says the demons from the abyss world have invaded the campaign space. And their target is you, as we see his hologram, looking down on the kids. He says they are doing their best to repair the rules, and it is estimated to take them one hour. He then says, In the coming hour, you must protect yourselves. We don't know how will the demons from the abyss act against you. But he believes that as long as you stay united, there is nothing the power of the abyss can do. And we see Sha Shui, and she doesn't look too pretty anymore, and she literally has a look of despair on her face. We see Bai, and he looks pretty cool here, and he says, People of Shen Xia, we will not be afraid to die while fighting. Somebody then raises his sword, and he says, We shall not be afraid to die while fighting. Of course, it is Wang Zihao the Rage Warrior, and our boy really is a good leader. They then start to chant with him that they won't be afraid to die. Lin Mo Yu, of course, is more on the strategic side. He says the weakest monsters from the Abyss are level 70. And if Bai says that we can fight against the invading power, 
that means that the power is not too strong, which makes sense. We see the examiners and they say, the abyss are clearly aiming for the exam. And he says something like this really happened. One of them then say they are aiming for the geniuses who can participate in the fifth round. This is trying to cut off the foundation of Shen Xia. And if they can't handle it, this time they might come again every year. Of course, Ning Xuan Feng says, stop talking, tell the people outside to not panic and they have to believe in Bai. They are then like, yes, we must believe in him. And we then see a red moon and it is the blood abyss moon. They then point up at it and even Shashui looks up really scared. He says, look, the power of the abyss is acting now. And they say everybody to get ready. They then mention, you gotta step over the corpse of knights if you want to kill our teammates. And then the monsters say, si, si, si. not bad as expected of the future of Shensha Empire. Too bad you will all die. He then mentions, as we see Shashui and Lin Mo Yu together, with some random extra in the background, one hour is enough for me to slaughter all of you. Such a shame, I cannot taste your delicious corpses. This guy really is a creep. We then see the moon getting closer and closer. And we see, it's here, the furry beastman warrior. Abyss polluted, and his level is 19. We also see he has two axes in his hands, and they are short axes, which means this guy is a full range, close range warrior. And this might be dangerous, because of course, he has gone rogue. One of the ladies says, I remember now, there's a limitation in the campaign space, and the highest level is 19. And then the guy with bows behind him says, Yeah, how could I forget about that? So what are we acting afraid of? There are so many of us. But then, more come out behind him. And they wonder how there are so many, because all of them are at least enhanced elites. Shashui literally grabs onto Lin Mo Yu's arm and she hides behind him. She says, what should we do? Because our girl has become afraid. He says, it's troublesome, but this is manageable. He then mentions, enhanced elites, isn't that the same as a nightmare dungeon? And he mentions that they have mutated from being infected by the abyss powers. So he says they will provide more experience points as we see him facing off against a goblin. And our guy just cares about the experience points because he knows that with him there, all is going to be alright. The chapter starts and of course, the monsters ask, are you scared now? Are you frightened? And then he says, the white deity said that as long as you work together, you would win. There is one for each of you to take. By the way guys, the white deity is, of course, it's Bai, but that's just his nickname, I guess. Wang Zihao says, we, we can't win. I can't even lift my blade. And he's going to be surrounded by the darkness. We then see the goth girl. And of course, the sword user beside her. And honestly, she looks like she's Wolverine with those swords coming out of her hands. And then we see Lin Mo Yu. And he knows what's about to go down. She says, stupid Lin, what are you doing? Come back quickly. There's over 100 level 19 enhanced elite monsters over there. And then Lin Mo Yu says, Go back. She says, no. He then says, whatever then. It won't really affect me if she follows me whatsoever. And then she has a specter in her hand. Or the scepter. And then she says, what is this guy doing? And the others around them say the same as well. Lin Mo Yu is a level 60 necromancer. What kind of profession is that? Are those skeletons he created? She then says, a new profession. Another type of summoner. What do we do? Do we really trust this and fight with him? We then see them following behind Sha Shui, and they know that this is their best hope of surviving. And Lin Mo Yu just looks back, and he knows that things are about to go down. Of course, the girl says, we cannot cower from battle nor fear from death. And then the monster laughs, saying, someone finally wants to die. How brave. It would be a pity to kill you now. So why not you consider becoming the Demon King's slave? He says, consider it. But Lin Mo Yu seems like he doesn't give a crap. He says the gate will be open just for you. And then he's just thinking in his mind. It's about 50 meters. That's the best distance from corpse explosion to work the most effectively. They wonder why he stopped. And then he says, as the aura comes out of his hand, this is enough. He then summons all of his skeletons and his summons as we see them form behind him. And then we see the skeleton warrior's amount is 100. And they look ready and they're hungry for battle. They're like, how does he have so many? What kind of profession is this? And she wonders how it's so fast and this girl is just shocked. These summoned creatures are even faster than her. 
whose main attribute is a guilty. We see them use Rage Strike and Slash. They are still alive even after getting hit. We then see the skeleton, however, and the bones start to get cut. Rage Strike, 1995 out of 2500. He says, looks like these monsters have around 3000 strength. He just smiles in the face of danger, saying to be able to withstand that many attacks, the constitution is probably over 3500. And however, with corpse explosion, the higher the constitution, the better. Killed, level 19 Fury Beastman Warrior, and he obtained 8000 experience. As we see the warrior get sliced like he is an onion. He then has his hand and he uses corpse explosion. And he mentions, even though the amount of experience gained is a little small, it's still better than not getting none at all. And yeah, that actually just rhymed. He uses corpse explosion. And we see them start to blow up as the people behind him wonder what's going on. Boom, boom, boom. They're all that dead. They wonder, was it that simple? What kind of skill is that? He's so powerful. Wang Zihao is literally shocked like Gao Yang. And he says, how is he so strong? Why didn't I awaken this profession? This is not fair at all. The monster says, impossible. This is impossible. You have angered me. I will kill you. Drink your blood and eat your flesh. Our boy really thinks he's going to even touch Lin Mo Yu. He says, let's see how you deal with this. And he sends even more monsters. And he looks up and he realizes, so that's where you are. And I know where he's going to be headed. He says, you lunatic. As we see the ugly looking creature question what he's going to do. And of course, he's going to get wrecked. Corpse explosion. Soul blaze. He then sends it. And boom. I'll kill you. I'll definitely kill you. He wonders how he's still alive. As we see the ugly horned beast here. He mentions, what kind of skill is this? How is it able to burn my soul? What is this profession? This can't be. There's not a way that somebody like you can exist in this world. As we see him, and our boy is literally about to get disintegrated. Lin Mo Yu just says, this is the price for invading. And then we hear, on the outside, what? The power of the abyss is getting weaker. And it is some old bearded man. And he wonders, all of the people in the tower are dead? But of course, that is wrong. He says, I can still feel the energy of many people in there. It's only the Abyss Aura getting weaker. And he says a Demon King must be injured. And then we see, say, that earlier I was worried to death. Next time, don't just release your aura without thinking, okay? And then Bai mentions, however, the Demon King uses the power of the Abyss to disrupt the rules of the battle space. Even if we can't enter, who is able to hurt it? Can it be those candidates who are level 15 and 16? And then we switch back to inside the dungeon, and of course the monster says, I'll kill you, I'll eliminate you, everybody, go kill Lin Mo Yu. And the monsters are getting a power up. We see a monster that is about to attack one of the examinees, and he just looks back. And of course Lin Mo Yu says to himself, Corpse explosion leveled up. After the blessing, the radius of corpse explosion will be 20 meters, and deal 150 damage. Corpse explosion went from level 1 to level 2, and of course... The damage to enemies is now within 2 meters. He mentions, is this a type of skill that requires repeated use and familiarity to upgrade? Or does it mean that the other talent skills, when changing professions, all the skills learned using scrolls need to be upgraded? He says perfect timing, and he looks behind him. And I know that these dudes are gonna get wrecked. The chapter starts, and we see Lin Mo Yu literally shining in golden aura. As we see that he has leveled up. Everybody around him is like, who is he? He's actually using these weird monsters to level up? He seemed to be called Lin Mo Yu, a new class. Thankfully, he's on our side. There is a lot of emotion in this picture. We then see the moon, and then Lin Mo Yu looks up as his monsters literally send these goblins up. And he says, it looks like you can't escape. The monster then says, you're Lin Mo Yu. This king remembers you. When you come to this abyss, this king will... Boom, he literally gets corpse explosion and rest in peace to that guy. The moon literally shatters and we see the battle space is back to normal. The kids look up and they wonder if Lin Mo Yu won. We see the abyss consciousness has been eradicated as we see literal liquid gold start to flow out of the rock. And we also see... 
the three hunters outside. And then the old guy says, the battle space is being restored. How are the kids? Bai Yu Wan asks. The old guy says the kids are safe and sound. No casualties. As he has his hand out, giving off the golden aura. Bai Yu Wan is like, what the heck? Completely different from what I expected. What exactly happened in that battle space? They then are looking at it with a beautiful yellow cold waterfall. And he says, just to be safe, let's teleport the kids back. And let's retrace what happened inside the battle space. Xia Shui then asks, hey, dummy Lin, are you alright? He simply says, yeah, I'm fine, like the typical MC protagonist. He then mentions, as we look up to Bayou Wan, everyone, the abyssal power has disappeared and the battle space is back to normal. You will be sent back to your original testing site and the exam results will be announced later. Xia Shui then says, we could have even contend against these orc warriors. Thankfully, Lin Mo Yu was there. They then get teleported back as we see Wang Zihao, Xia Shui, and of course, Lin Mo Yu and the goth girl are standing in front of a castle. The system says, the main combat exam is over. All examinees, please wait for the final evaluation. We then see Ning Shuan Feng, and he mentions that the combat result has already concluded and there are a lot of points and evaluations. And their evaluations, unlike other examinees, are given directly by the high-ranking officials of the Shensha Empire. And that top-tier academics aren't just about having high points. The evaluation needs to be excellent as well. He then looks at Lin Mo Yu and he mentions what happened in that battle space. But I'm kind of looking forward to what kind of evaluation Lin Mo Yu will receive. We then see, it seems that Bai Yu Yuan is looking at a replay of what happened. And he sees Lin Mo Yu as he literally is looking pretty cool. He says this person is a necromancer. I've heard of the class before. It's a brand new class that appeared in the Shihai city of Jianlian province. But he didn't expect him to turn the tide. And he says it's impressive. As we see some of his cool accomplishments here. He says calm, decisive in battle and powerful. This kid already has a potential to become a top tier expert. But not only is his class powerful, he must have also awakened strong talents as well. He then remembers in his mind that what's so difficult about it, those cowards fled and they desert the battlefield of the future and he can't rely on them. After all, they're teenagers and Lin Mo Yu's evaluation is different. And of course, it is way excellenter than others if that even is a world. We see number one, Lin Mo Yu, 34,000 points and 605. Evaluation excellent, as it shows on a big hologram, and all of the students are gathered. Of course, Principal Lu Yud literally shouts out, like, let's go, well done, kid. And of course, the old guy back there, and the girl, and the grandma in the purple robe, are like, congratulations. She says, giving old Lu the top score in the province, he'll be bragging for another 20 years. We see Sha Shui and Lin Mo Yu. And she says, congratulations, Lin Mo Yu. You really got the top score in the province. And he just says, thank you. She says, you're actually smiling. And then the background has changed to flowers. And she says, you look so pretty when you smile. Why don't you ever smile normally? We see number two is Sha Shui. Points 7,600. Evaluation excellent. The people behind him say, old Lu got it. Second place is also his. And that he really envies him. Third is Feng Shu with 6,700. Four is Zhu Mei with 6,325. And five is Wang Xihao, 6,300. But his evaluation is poor. Dang it. We see Wang Zihao and he says, My evaluation is poor. He says, Once his evaluation comes out, forget about Shajing Academy. Even the top 20 high tier academies of the Empire won't expect me. So he's very mad. He says, I won't accept it. Why did they give me a poor evaluation? And he says this isn't fair. He then gets sucked into some sort of portal below him and it says Wang Zihao violated the rules of exam area. Expulsion. We then see the examiner is on top of the wall. They say for combat class professions, this year's top scorer in Jianning province is Lin Mo Yu. We even see Gao Yang celebrating with the rest of them on the ground. And he sails out. See that? Lin Mo Yu is our leader. Top scorer, top scorer in the province. He says silence, an imperial order has arrived. Lin Mo Yu has become this year's 
and they look up in the tower, and they don't know what's happening. They say Lin Mo Yu has become this year's national exam top scorer, and they're all yelling out in shock. We then see President Lu Yun, and he is like, I didn't hear wrong, did I? Lin Mo Yu is a national top scorer? And then our boy literally becomes an angel with angels around him, and he's crying with bliss. And he says, ha ha, top scorer, national top scorer. The people below them are like, are you okay, old Lu? Don't get too excited, and you might even hurt yourself. And now you can brag for a lifetime. The other students, or the side characters, say, Lin Mo Yu is truly amazing. Our Jianning province produce a national top scorer. They say in the future, I'll make my child go to the same school. Wow, these guys really just want to be a fan, huh? We then see Feng Shu and Zhu Mei, and they say, Lin Mo Yu, congratulations. Thank you. Without you, we would have been in some trouble this time. He shakes his hand and says it's nothing. And then Feng Shu says you're probably planning to take the exam at Jiajing Academy, right? And then he says, let's meet at Jiajing Academy. I'll treat you to a meal then. He says, okay. And then, of course, Sha Shui says, this guy doesn't really talk much. I've been his classmate for three years. And we haven't even exchanged 10 sentences as she puts up the X sign with her fingers. Lin Mo Yu says, 26 sentences, and they are all literally shocked and puzzled. And then, of course, Sha Shui is embarrassed, while Zhu Mei and Feng Shu are like, huh, that is so funny. We are back at Lin Mo Yu's hole, and he says, Sister, I'll be at Sha Jing Academy soon. And he mentions to his grandma, I have become the national top scorer. We then see a knock on the door, and he says, Principal Lu, why are you here? We then see... A shadow or a literal graven image of Bai Yi Wan. He says, such a terrifying aura, even breathing, is difficult. He then releases one of his summons and he brings him out so quickly and it seems like he got sort of intimidated. Bai Yi Wan says, good reaction. And then he bows down saying, greetings, Lord Bai Shen. As we see Lu Yun just happy to be there. And the chapter comes. To an end. Lin Mo Yu bows his head and surprisingly even his skeleton summon does so as well. Bai Yu Wan says, I came here this time to talk to you about the matter of Shajing Academy. He says, calm, composed, excellent instinctive reactions. You're really a good seedling. As we see the picture of his grandma and the rest of his family on top of a drawer in the corner. President Lu Yu says, please don't mind, but Mo Yu's sister went to Shajing Academy last year. So, he actually has been living here alone. As we see our boy serving him boba, I mean, of course, um, tea, as Bai Yi Wan is just sitting down. He says with such a family background, both siblings were able to enter Shajing Academy. This is such a remarkable family. And he mentions how having a genius like him is even rarer, as of course, he looks at him, and he's looking really awesome. He sees a skeleton warrior. We see his strength, agility, and energy, and for Zeke, are at 250. He says these are all average attributes. But in the battle space, how did you achieve that? And this skeleton looks really scary, and our boy is just giving Ba Yi Yuan the death stare. He says, four attributes at 250. He says it seems like others cannot see the talent boosted attributes of the skeleton warrior. Bai then asks, what talent did you awaken? Mo Yu, did you really awaken a talent? He says, my talent is amplification. It amplifies all my skills. And then the legend Bai says, that makes sense then. And then he tells him with a very, well, kind of menacing look in his eyes, I have two things to discuss this time. First is a reward from Jiajing Academy. And second is to take you to the Academy. There will be a trial the day after tomorrow. And Bai is really looking forward to our boy, Lin Mo Yu, participating. Lin then asks, what kind of trial is it? Are you trying to scam me? Just kidding. He says it's an internal trial with the Jiajing Academy and that the participants are all our own internal students and he can't tell him the specifics until he agrees to go. He then begins to ponder and our bro really is the thinker. He says participation is not compulsory. The decision is up to me. And what do you mean by internal and participants? He wonders if it is secretive and it seems like the trial's content is unusual. He mentions I can reveal the content but I can't tell you. The opportunity is once in a lifetime, 
and normally he wouldn't have been able to participate in the trial. And of course, our boy Lin Mo Yu is shocked and he just says, heck yeah bro, let's get on this right now. Bai then smiles and laughs, saying since that's the case, let me give you the rewards first. He then brings them out from his inventory, and he says as a national top scorer, your rewards are quite substantial, and it is skill scrolls. He says the first reward is 100,000 points in addition to your exam score, and your points are all here, as he hands him a sort of credit card. He mentions that you should have heard that within the academy, points are more useful than gold, and then we see the scrolls as he says. The second reward is one primary skill scroll and one intermediate skill scroll. We then see some sort of dark tower that looks kind of intimidating. And he says the third item is based on your performance in the battle space, an additional reward for you, and the qualification to enter the Divine Summer Tower once. He then says, the qualification to enter this tower is very precious, especially for the first time, be sure to prepare well before going. And I think this is going to really help him level up. Of course, Lin Mo Yu says, I understand. And then he says, when Lord Bai Shen stresses this, it surely holds a significant importance. He says, tidy up a bit. I'll take you to the Jiajing Academy. And our boy Bai looks very optimistic. You see a very green and blue sky, which is very similar to his ability summits. And then President Lu Yun just says, good luck, kid as they are teleported towards the Jajing Academy. They then get teleported and this thing seems like an utter utopia with huge walls and huge buildings and huge gates and entrances to welcome them in. Jajing Academy. They see a huge pillar and it seems that there's golden aura flowing from within as they look at it. Bai says this gate is not only an entrance but it can be used as a weapon and even top tier experts would pay a huge price to forcefully enter it. And he says, let's go, dude. He then enters inside the room and he tells him to get a seat. This is a residential area you'll be staying in today. He will be going now, so get some rest and somebody will come guide you. And then somebody bows down and says, Lord Bai Shen. The orange haired guy then starts to sweat saying, what is the identity of this kid? Lord Bai Shen personally received him, yet his tone towards Lord Bai Shen is so cold. The orange hair guy then asks, are you Lin Mo Yu? And Lin Mo Yu just says, yeah bro, it's definitely me. He says, where would you like to stay? Either a four person room, which is 500 points a month, two person room, 1000 points per month, or a single room, 2000, and even a villa at 10,000 points per month. He says, we have four various options, four person, two person, single room, dormitory, standalone villas, villas with practice grounds, and different accommodations have a huge price difference. And the practice villa doesn't seem to have any price on it, and I'm guessing it's a lot of points per month. He says, student Lin, I know you just finished the exam and you have a lot of points, but I still advise you to save where you can, and there are many places where points are needed. So just stay in a four-person room, but then he says, I want a single room dormitory. And then he says, sure, save a bit, go for the single room dormitory. And I think it's really good for some privacy. He then says, wait. Single room dormitory? Are you sure? Because our boy was really thinking he got the four person. He says it was so extravagant and not saving now, but you'll regret it when you realize how hard points are to earn later. But Lin Mo Yu just says, yeah, let's do this, dude. We are then in Lin Mo Yu's single room dormitory. And he says this will do. And it seems pretty peaceful and pretty awesome. The orange haired kid says, great, student Lin, give me your ID and I'll register it right now. Ding. Minus 1,000 points from his 133,605 and our boy is just shocked by this. He says, how the heck do you have this many points? And Lin Mo Yu just looks at him casually saying, this is the reward from becoming the national top scorer. And then the guy in orange hair is like, 130,000? No wonder you want to stay in a single room dormitory. And then he mentions since he entered the academy, he's only earned 10,000 points in total and he doesn't even have a fraction of what he has. He then smiles as he leaves saying, all right, from now on, this room is your dormitory. Rest well and please come find me if you need anything. And uh, remember to get a communication device tomorrow because it'll be very convenient without it. And then Lin Mo Yu just looks outside like an anime protagonist in the school in the corner seat saying, is somebody practicing skills here? Indeed, it's Jiajing Academy and everybody is working hard. 
as we see some different colored auras, which are red, yellow, and blue, and even purple, and they seem to be cultivating of some sorts. He says in this kind of atmosphere, leveling up will definitely be much faster than before. The next day, he ends his meditation after somebody rings on the bell. And by the way guys, those shelves in the back look pretty aesthetic to me, and I don't know about you guys. His aura then starts to dissipate, and then he says, Hey, hey, what's wrong? Don't recognize me? And then Lin Mo Yi says, I do. It is Ning Yi Yi, and it was the assassin from the earlier chapters. She grabs onto his hand as she says, Come on, I'll take you to breakfast and show you around the academy. She really got that reverse Riz, but Lin Mo Yu is unrisable. Let's go, guys. Don't even bother playing the Riz music. We then see them at the academy cafeteria, and there seem to be a lot of delicious foods right here as he's holding a tray with a large piece of bread, and of course, Ning Yi Yi has like 10 steamed buns whatsoever. It seems relatively empty, but the light hitting the ground looks very beautiful. He says, I'm here. And then she says, how are you paying with points? You can use coins here. Places that accept coins definitely won't use points. He says, I don't have coins, only points. And she says, if you don't have coins, just say so, I've got plenty of coins. She says, don't waste points. Points are hard to earn. Luckily, it's just five points, but then she sees. How the heck do you have so many points? And her steamed bun literally just drops from her mouth, and she is shook. And Lin Mo Yu just gave a blank face, like, wait, this is a lot to you? She then says, remember, wherever you can use coins, never use points. And points should be used wisely, even if you have that many points. And it seems like she is scolding him like his bigger sister. And he says, yeah, yeah, okay, with his hand in his pocket. Just a casual Lin Mo Yu. He says, this is for you. So beautiful. Is this a core crystal of the Goblin King? And he says, yeah. And it's a really shiny red sparkling stone. She says, do you know its value? This is the core fifth tier Goblin King ring. It's a boss accessory, you know. If used for trading, the price would be at least 1 million coins. And Lin Mo Yu just says, so what? And then she says, are you really giving it to me? She then begins to blush because he says, yeah, you can have it. And then he mentions, such a valuable item, it appears the Dynasty Guild is truly exploiting. And then she says, thank you, I won't be polite then. We then see her guiding Lin Mo Yu as it travels to the garden, the library, and even some sort of hall. And her boy is really kidding around the ropes. She says, alright, your enrollment procedures have been completed and we are at the Academic Affairs Office. He says, why can't I find any information about my sister Lin Mo Han? And then we see it's blank information. She says it's possible she's on a special confidential mission from the academy. So the information cannot be retrieved. And it's also possible she joined some more specialized college. Like the Divine Creation College. And your sister might have joined some specific college. She says stop worrying nothing will happen. And then he says thank you. And she says as she looks back. Come on let's get to the main point. I brought you here today. To familiarize with academy. But I also have a task on head. We then see them in the classroom and she says, Sister Tao Tao, I've brought someone. It's a national top scorer. We then see a lady with a ponytail saying to him, Hello, my name is Xiang Tao Tao, level 23, and I am of the elf knight class. And she seems to have a pretty cool outfit on. He says, I am Lin Mo Yu. I'm a level 17 necromancer. Some guy holding some weird looking staff with the crystal floating says, only level 17, are you kidding me? If you're bringing somebody, you can't just bring along anyone, right? And this guy is a little bit too cocky. He doesn't really know how strong our boy Lin Mo Yu is. Zhang Tao Tao says, Ling Zen, what do you mean by that? Watch your words, Mo Yu is the national top scorer. And then he says, compared to our hidden dragon team, being the national top scorer means nothing. And this guy thinks he's the empty protagonist and he says, I've seen all of the previous national top scorers and every single one of them were just trash. Of course, Ling Zen then leans in towards Ling Mo Yu and says, You're Lin Mo Yu, right? I know you were introduced by Lord Bai Shen. And you won't think that you can do whatever you want just because you know Lord Bai Shen. Am I right? And then he says, with his eyes starting to literally go on fire, in our hidden dragon team, it's all about strength. And it's alright to bring you along for the trial, but you have to keep your mouth shut and make sure that you don't drag us down. He then says, otherwise I won't be so nice to you. And then Lin Mo Yu says in his head, 
Even Shashue isn't as arrogant as this dude, and his hands are still in his pocket, and he says, going nuts. Ling Zen is literally on a rampage now as we see the veins from his head, and he says, what did you say? And he unleashes some of his fiery aura. He says, Ling Zen, you dare to make a move. And of course, even Ningyi Yi says this. Jiang Tao Tao tells him to stop as she puts up a barrier. And then, of course, Ling Zhen just says, Sister Tao Tao, I'm being very considerate of you as we see one of his orange crystals go through her blade. And then he leaves and turns his back towards them. Jiang Tao Tao says, We'll meet here at 9 o'clock the next day, and I can only tell you about the trial's content on the day it is, so only tomorrow, as she hopes that he can understand. Lin Mo Yu says, Yeah, yeah, it's all good. And then Ning Yi Yi says, Let's go, we need to buy some things and make preparations. And Jiang Tao Tao says, Ling Zhen, I know you have your grievances, but don't bring your personal grievances into this trial. And she says, Besides, Lin Mo Yu was introduced by no one other than Lord Bai Shen. And then Ling Zhen says, I have my boundaries and I just wanted to see what kind of person replaced his brother's position. And oh oh, I think this is kind of scary. She says with her hands folded, he's a national top scorer. And even though it doesn't mean much, he must have something extraordinary to even just accomplish that. And his class is also a newly introduced one. And Ling Zhen just says, even if you bring somebody along, ensure that they are useful. Because every single year, new classes appear, but most of them are trash and he suspects that this one is trash as well. We then go to the hallways where Ning Yi Yi says, let's go, we'll buy some healing potions, mana potions, and communication devices. And then she says to Lin Mo Yu, don't quarrel because that guy, he's literally crazy. We then arrive at the store and then Lin Mo Yu says, please help me with the purchase. She says 10 red and blue potions each and one communication device as we also see an arrow or a bow and a sword on the table. We then see it is identifying him through his bracelet which I think is pretty advanced and it's pretty cool. Ning Yi says, I can bother you anytime now. And then she says as she shows him his bracelet, let's become friends first. And then he says, sure. And oh gosh, our girl really got that reverse risk. But if she tries anything else, she's definitely going to get rejected. As we see, you can actually add friends on your bracelets. And this is a pretty cool mechanic, like it's straight out of a video game. He says as she is about to leave, see you at the trial in Moyu. And he smiles saying, I'll see you there as well. He then brings out his primary skill scroll. And look at this guys, it's literally shining in all of its glory. We then see he says, we need to prepare more for this trial. And he uses the scroll. And we see it literally start to evaporate and he absorbs it. Acquired skill, slow curse. Slow curse is at level 1. And it curses enemies within a 50 meter range, reducing their speed by 50%. However, it only lasts for 10 minutes. But honestly, that's not even that bad. That's pretty long in a fight. Lin Mo Yu says to himself, after talent amplification, the range reached 50 meters and the slowing effect increased to 50. And then we see an image of him literally running away from a goblin with an axe and the goblin seems annoyed. He says the duration has also extended to 10 minutes and this is really another amazing skill. And now his skills can now be categorized into summoning, attack, and curse series. And I think our boy Lin Mo Yu just keeps getting more OP as he puts his head on his cheeks. And our boy is really looking like an OPMC even more. He says regardless of the series, they are all important and very powerful. And he says he hopes to learn other skill series in the future as he sits down on his bed, thinking and reminiscing. The next day, it is a beautiful sunny day and the clouds are out being beautiful. And of course, we see Ning Yi Yi and she says, wake up, the sun is shining. And she says that she will come down for breakfast. And then after that, they'll head towards the location. Of course, Jiang Tao Tao says, after we're teleported over, don't wander around aimlessly. And then Ling Zhen is still folding his arms and he says, Kid, don't slow us down. There seems to be somebody else beside Lin Mo Yu with some pretty crazy looking hair. Ning Yi Yi spits out her tongue and says, don't drag us down too and we'll be fine. And of course, Yang Tao Tao just says, now let's introduce our classes guys and whatever conflicts you have, please deal with them after the trial. 
We see Miao Yu who had the crazy hair beside Lin Mo Yu and she is an elf elder and she is a level 20 and she has a rare class and we see Duan Gao at level 20 who has a rare class of a diviner and these two look pretty mature for their age and they seem pretty strong and we see Ling Zen and he scratches his head like Lin Zen level 21 and I'm a warlock and it is also a rare class and our boy I feel like he's just a tsundere as we see Jing Tao Tao in the corner and she's giving him that look that your mom gives you to make sure you do something right. We then see Yang Tao Tao level 23 elf knight and then of course Lin Mo Yu level 17 necromancer and Ning Yi Yi a level 19 shadow assassin. And everybody has a rare class except for our boy Lin Mo Yu who of course has the best class in the world which is necromancer. Jiang Tao Tao then says, in this trial, we must unite. She really thinks that this is the Avengers. She has some sort of crystal in her hand and she tells everyone to not blame her for being impolite. And Ning Yi says, as assured Mrs. Tao Tao, we won't affect the trial. We then see some sort of portal open up below them and the crystal starts to float in the air. She says, Jiajing Academy Hidden Dragon Team, let's begin the trial teleportation. We then see them teleport and this seems like a very different world. We see a huge black and spooky tower surrounded by chains and a very ominous red aura with some sort of light emanating from the top. Even Lin Mo Yu is taken aback with Ning Yi Yi. He says it is the divine Xia Tower and it turns out the divine Xia Tower is in the sky. He wonders if the Divine Shop Tower's power teleports them as we see some sort of light hitting their face and going across them. We see the Mermaid Island and it seems to be inside of some sort of globe and they get there. They see a mission stone and Jam Tao Tao says, everybody please touch the mission stone to learn about this mission. He touches it and we find out the mission says, enter the Mermaid's Tier Dungeon, defeat the final boss and obtain the Mermaid's Tier. 1. A team of up to 6 people can enter the island with an average level of up to 20. The mermaid's tier only drops in Nightmare difficulty dungeons. And 3. Only 3 mermaid tiers will drop as Lin Mo Yu is touching the stone. And in other words, only the top 3 teams that clear the dungeon can obtain this mermaid's tier. The mermaid's tier dungeon is located at the center of the mermaid island as we see a huge literal mountain here with birds and there seems to be a very glorious waterfall flowing from the side of it. He says in the end it's just a matter of clearing the dungeon and could it be that the mermaid's tier might actually have some special properties which will be useful to Lin Mo Yu. Jiang Tao Tao says as she folds her arm, I did expect this trial to be on mermaid island and Ning Yi asks, Sister Tao Tao, you've been on many trial missions, you're all experienced, so please tell us about it. She explains that the mermaid's tier can be used to craft a very special equipment and the effects are significant and this is exactly what we wanted to hear. Not only is the mermaid island within the territory of Divine Sha Empire and only three mermaids tier drops every single year. And she starts to ponder and she says so besides our Divine Sha Empire, other countries also come to Mermaid Island every year. As we see the island over here and there seems to be a battle, she explains that there are 10 teams in the Hidden Dragon Academy and they are the team too. Which means we not only compete with our fellow students but also from the academies from other countries which means the competition is high as we see some shadows here with red eyes and I think these guys are definitely OP. Ming Yi is kind of nervous and she says what if we run into other teams from other countries? What should we do? And Jiang Tao Tao just says similar situations have happened before but at most they would guard the entrance to the dungeon to prevent the entry. But then we see Jiang Tao Tao and she seems kind of nervous and she says deaths have occurred before and if a real conflict arises you have to deal with it as it comes because your life is the most important. As we get a flashback as Ning Yi looks at Lin Mo Yu when they fought those three knights. He says don't worry, we won't encounter that kind of situation. We are then in the jungle and we hear, Alright guys, we're ready to enter the mermaid island. Duan Gao, apply your buffs. Sure, he says. Strength enhancement, agility enhancement, defense enhancement, and mana activations. As everybody is literally getting a buff and I'm really hyped for this battle.
Lin Mo Yu looks at his hand and says, Attributes increase by 30%, skill power 20%, and it lasts for 1 hour, and this divider is indeed a powerful support class. He does say though, it's just a pity. Compared to his talent, the divider's amplification effect is way too weak. As we see, he summons one of his skeletons, and he says if the divider's buffs are also applied to the skeleton warriors, he wonders what effect they will have. Of course, Miao Yu and the Diviner are like, what the heck, undead summon? And Nin Yi Yi says, don't be afraid, this little skeleton warrior is so cute, what the heck is she saying? Lin Mo Yu asks, could you please give it a buff too, thanks? And he says, oh yeah, sure, I guess. He then mentions, his skills cannot be applied to it. And he wonders if his talent is too strong, and Duan Gao's blessing skill is directly overwritten by his talent. And Ling Zhen says, it can't even be buffed. This summon is as useless as his master, as Lin Mo Yu just looks at him along with his undead summon, and I don't think he should have said that. And I hope that they don't get into a fight because, well, I feel sorry for Ling Zen. Ling Zen says as he takes on a very menacing stance with his staff in his hand, what, you wanna fight? And of course, Jiang Tao Tao blocks him, and he says, you can fight later, let's finish the trial test. And of course, these guys really are going at it, or at least Ling Zen is. We then see the ghost summon, and then he says, why do I feel like I'm about to die when a summon looks this way? My body gets cold, and it gets as stiff as a board. We then see Jiang Tao Tao, and she has her shield in her hand, and she runs past them, and she says, the trial has begun, as they follow her. And we see that this is where it's gonna go down. Miao Yu says, Our target is a mermaid dungeon. We need to move fast. Avoid fighting the monsters if possible, as she looks at Jiang Tao Tao. We then see them running, as we see some sort of sea monster with orange gills. And then it goes back inside the water. But then, after that, it comes right back up. It is a merfolk soldier, a mermaid folk. Its level is 19, strength 300, agility 150, vitality 200, physique 320, but it has no skills, as it is above Jiang Tao Tao. We see Jiang Tao Tao goes in for the kill, and of course Nin Yi Yi goes behind it, and of course we see it launch a fireball at her. She then slices his throat, and then we see the notification. Killed level 19 merfolk soldier, experience plus 1500. Captain Jiang Tao Tao obtained fish scale plus one. We then see as the fire starts to subside, we see Ling Zhen and of course Yang Tao and the rest of them. She says now level 21 monsters have appeared and at this rate, it'll take us more than three hours to reach the island center. She says that we're too slow and we can't clear out the monsters anymore. And she tells Miao Yu, you're in charge of control. We're charging through. We then see Wind Bide as we see a huge blue looking tornado and Miao Yu says hurry up, I have it under control. 20 minutes later and we see some sort of swamp. They say that we're falling behind as Yang Tao Tao looks and there seems to be other competitors. She starts to get nervous and she says, if we charge straight ahead, do we have a chance? She says there are too many of them and she can't control them. And Miao Yu says, plus the monsters are level 22, which are higher than her level. We see a picture of the mountain, and then we see charging in directly could put them in danger as they may end up getting surrounded. But if they clear the path along the way, it will take at least a whole hour, and then they'll even fall farther behind. And then Lin Mo Yu says confidently as Yang Tao Tao looks surprised. He says, let me do it, and she is literally sweating like, wait, what the heck did he just say? Ling Zhen says, you, a level 17 newbie, ha <laughs> what can you do? He says, you haven't even lifted a finger this whole way. And then Ning Yi says, as she gives him a side eye, shut your mouth up. And then Ling Zhen just says, you should keep hiding behind these women. Jiang Tao Tao says, Lin Mo Yu, what plan do you exactly have? And he just gives him a side eye too, saying, I'll use a skeleton warrior to distract the merfolk monsters. As we see, he still has his hands in his pocket like an absolute savage. Jiang Tao Tao says, right, he has a summon. And then she says, all right, Lin Mo Yu, it's all up to you now. Like the typical side character, I'm just kidding, guys. Anyways, we see the skeleton literally leap forward and she notices how fast his movements are. She yells out to her assistants or her comrades and she says, The path is cleared, let's go right now. 
We then see Skeleton Warrior has been recalled to the summoning space as they are in a safe spot in the area. Jiang Tao Tao gives Lin Mo Yu the thumbs up and she says well done and she also says that she owes him this time. Ling Zen says why didn't we do this from the beginning? We could have been up the mountain by now without even falling behind. And then of course Lin Yi Yi says quit talking nonsense here. If you're so capable you can go up the mountain all by yourself. And then Lin Mo Yu says one last time and it seems he's about to get pissed off after Ling Zen says it's all thanks to your summon. Maybe you're just trash yourself. But then Miao Yu looks very despairful and she says, hurry, run away. We then see literally hundreds of the mirror folk above Jiang Tao Tao and she yells out with all that she can, everybody, we must all retreat. And even Duan Gao the Diviner behind her is getting nervous. We then see it is a people from Country 4 as this guy seems to be holding some sort of charm. And he is holding the country's unique class Shikigami Summoners, also known as Spirit Summoners. He then launches two of them and they are literally blazing as we see some sort of centaur or horse thing step on the ground. And one of the skills of the Shikigami Summoners is that they can summon ancient deities. And Jiang Tao Tao and Miao are like, why the heck are they doing this? And then Jiang Tao Tao says they want us to stop from going up the mountain. We then see the guy from the fourth country and he is on top of that sort of Taurus and then he points towards them saying, you guys can stay here. If you can't hold on, use the mission stone to teleport away because this mermaid dungeon belongs to our great country this time. And he laughs. We then see some of them in the back and they mention, this Shikigami summoner is a legendary level and they say that their country has not spared anything. Now there are hundreds of mirror folk gathered here and it'll take several hours to clear them all. Jiang Tao Tao then looks at Lin Mo Yu and says, Lin Mo Yu, can you really do this? She asks, is there a summoner here? Get those monsters away as Lin Mo Yu starts to load up his summoners. We then see one of his summon and it is running away and it is chasing the mirror folk or getting chased by the mirror folk and they wonder, whose summon is this? He's literally drawing all the monsters away and this is good news for them. But too bad there are still two thirds of the monsters left. He then brings out another one and says, Go lure those monsters away. And Jiang Tao Tao is really shocked as she says, Wow, Lin Mo Yu, you really have two of them? This girl is in for a world of surprise because she does not know that he literally has like a hundred. He says there is no need for corpse explosions because that will seal his experience. He then says, Here comes another one as they see the other skeleton and this guy is about to run really fast. He says when the trial is over, I'll treat you to drinks. The skeleton then begins to run and they are like, there's actually a third one. And they all yell, thank you to whoever who summoned this. And it's all thanks to Lin Mo Yu. It's all stable now, so let's go and don't let the Shikigami summoners get so cocky. They then go to Lin Mo Yu and they pat his back like thank you so much. And next time they run into him, they will really bring him along. And Ling Zed folds his arm because he is jealous. The Shikigami summoner looks behind him and wonders what the heck is going on because all of the mirror folk are running the opposite direction. He wonders how did they get up here and with so many monsters they should be held back for at least a few hours but then he calls out to his archers and says get ready archers they must have found a way to deal with the mirror folk so we must stop him as we see all the arrows get shot. It not only shoots the mirror folk but also the magicians and of course the mages and they tell them to put up their shields on. Lin Mo Yu is in a safe bubble and he says the clash has begun. And of course this time with you and your warrior skeleton, I'm not afraid is what Ning Yi Yi says. After the first round of clashes, we see them sitting around on rocks and they talk about how it won't work. Their team is too chaotic and they need to regroup. They need a powerful mage. They say yeah, we're missing quite a few people at the mountain's base. And of course, we must regroup to suppress Country Y. Ling Zen then says, Captain, I want to join another team as Jiang Tao Tao is regaining her strength. Of course, Ling Zen says, either Lin Mo Yu leaves or I leave, Captain, so you get to decide. And then Duan Gao says to Ling Zen, you really are going a bit far. And even Miao Yu is just shocked by what he's saying. She yells, exactly, if it wasn't for Lin Mo Yu luring the monsters, we wouldn't even have made it up here. 
And then Ning Yi just looks at Ling Zen like, really? You're really something, Ling Zen. This guy really saved all of us and he still has to trash talk. Of course, Ling Zen says in his mind, Captain will definitely try to keep me, and other teams are looking for mages, and they can't afford to lose a damage dealer, so this way, he can kick Len Mo Yu out of the team. But then, Jiang Tao Tao says, with complete conviction, in that case, Ling Zen, you must leave, and you should leave this team. And that's what happens when you get too cocky, and pride comes before the fall. We see Ling Zen's face, and guys, this guy is literally shot, and this guy should really just leave the team. He says to Jiang Tao Tao, You want me to leave the team? If I leave the team, you won't be able to pass a trial. Are you saying you don't want to get into the creation seminary anymore? But then of course, Yang Tao Tao says with a very serious and stern look, Have you forgotten what my profession is? As an elven knight, I have my own beliefs and I cannot fulfill your demands. And honestly guys, W down here for Jiang Tao Tao for having some real morals. And she's gonna get carried by, of course, our boy Lin Mo Yu. So she definitely made the right decision. He looks behind him as he leaves and he says, I hope you don't regret this. And Ling Zen has left the party. Lin Mo Yu says, let's enter the dungeon. And she says, but country Y is. But then of course, Ning Yi Yi, the assassin girl, says, Come on, sister, let's enter the dungeon. And Jiang Tao Tao is just kind of nervous and she wonders how. And then we see it is Duan Gao and Miao Yu, and they're like, What the heck's going on? But let's just follow as well. They then hurt towards this sort of waterfall, and she says, At the worst case, we can always retreat, and it won't be dangerous with Lin Mo Yu around, as even Ning Yi Yi begins to stretch. But I know Jiang Tao Tao is definitely really nervous. But Ning Yi has already seen the powers of her boy Lin Mo Yu, so it's gonna be a walk in the park. We then see the purple portal, and the people say, Get lost during shooters, as of course, their squad begins to walk towards them. They say you're not allowed near this dungeon, and they even get their attacks ready. They say, It's that brother who can summon, come on, we won't let Country Y get bullied by him, and it seems they already know his story. We also see Ling Zen smirking as he says, they really just want to die, huh? We then see some sort of boar launch towards them. And then of course we see Jiang Tao Tao put up her defense. And we see Lin Mo Yi behind her, already cooking something up. He puts his hands into the air. And he says, I summon you. As we see his skeleton bring up. We see the skeleton and it's doing lots of tricks and moves. And then we see like eight more come up from behind him. Everybody is shot. And they're like, what? Lin Mo Yu can actually summon that money? These skeletons are blocking all of the attacks. The other people that are wearing this sort of robe say, What kind of broken profession is this? These skeletons are too strong and their attacks are completely ineffective. They mention that they're going to enter the dungeon and this guy leaps up and says we need to stop them. But then of course, we see Lin Mo Yu just choosing the difficulty and it is nightmare level as they are behind him. They try to send towards their talisman but they get transported and into the dungeon, and all of them are really furious. We are in the dungeon, and they are below some big rocks, and it seems to be like in some sort of jungle. Lin Mo Yu is looking all happy, but Jiang Tao Tao looks back because Lin Mo Yu, wait, Lin Mo Yu literally has his pockets filled with his hands. This guy really is just definitely the MC. Of course, Ning Yi Yi mentions to her, Relax, sister. His skeletons are powerful. And Jiang Tao Tao says nervously, All right then, I hope their attacks are strong enough and I'll do my best to attack and block the monsters. We then see Miao Yu say nervously, Don't worry, sister. Miao Yu, heal me accordingly and I'll leave the crowd control to you. As you see the diviner who says, I'll give you my blessings. Killed level 21 elite mirrorfolk. Warrior, experience plus 10,000. And obtained 10 fish scales. Of course, Miao Yu then says suddenly, Wait, what's going on? Why am I receiving experience points now? Elite Merfolk Warrior Enhanced, level 21, strength 2000, 1200 agility, and his skills are shriek. And then it literally just caught one shot it. Lin Mo Yu then says, Continue looking for the target. And Jiang Tao Tao says in her head, Just now, his skeletons literally just one shot it nightmare monsters. How the heck is this possible? She says, Even if we had that perfect party, it would still take at least 1 to 2 minutes. Ning Yi then jumps on behind him and splashes into the ground. But she says, come on, I told you Lin Mo Yu's skeletons were strong, so let's go sister. 
and then everybody is on the way as well. One of the diviner, Duang Dao, says, We're still trying to digest the situation. But of course, this is such a good leader move by Jiang Tao Tao. He says there's no point, let's just hurry up now. He uses Raid Strike on these merfolk again. And then she says, as she literally just shocked and sweating in her head, this is the first time she felt so relaxed while clearing a dungeon. Yeah, that's just a side effect of knowing Lin Mo Yu and having him on her party. She says usually she would be at the front, but now she doesn't even need to aggro any monsters. As Duan Gao says, it looks like we're not needed. And Miao Yu just says, yeah, there's really nothing for us to do here. We then run into a dead end as they are on some sort of cliff. Lin Mo Yu says there's not a lot of monsters in this dungeon. But then Ning Yi looks down from the cliff and she says, look, it is the boss. It is the Merfolk Queen Serpent, an elite target with a strength of 3600, a level 23, and its skills are Lash, Death Strangle, and Venom. And the attributes are even higher than the previous Goblin King. And we also find out that Lin Mo Yu's Goblin stats are currently at level 2700. Of course, Jiang Tao Tao says she will go and attack the monster, but Lin Mo Yu just says casually, there's no need. As we see the skeletons jump off of the cliff, and oh gosh guys, this is just another day for Lin Mo Yu. The snake uses Lash, and it seems to have managed to, I guess, sort of scathe the skeletons. But then Jiang Tao Tao says it's too agile. What should we do? He then uses Slow Curse as we see the red aura and flame go on top of his hands. We then see it get bound by some chains, and if this guy really thinks he's Kurapaga or something, just kidding guys. But it literally just stopped in its trails. We then see the skeletons get on top of the snake, and Jiang Tao Tao says, Is that really some type of curse skill? Jiang Tao Tao just looks at Lin Mo Yu, who looks really gloomy. She says she has powerful summons and even a curse type skill. What else can a necromancer do? They use Death Strangle, but it's no use. And of course, the snake gets literally obliterated. We see the skeleton slice it here. He says that his skeletons are the undead, so Venom won't really affect them because there's no skin to lash onto. We then see the skeleton literally pierce right through the mouth of the snake, and it is GG, guys. Jem Tao Tao says it's really over as we see them go down to collect the loot. The notification is up there. Killed level 23 Merfolk Queen Serpent, experience plus 50,000. That is huge, guys. And they obtained silver grade armor, surface skin armor, and obtain the intermediate level monster core. And I know next chapter is definitely going to be, well, a lot of monsters dead. We see Miao Yu, Ning Yi Yi, and of course, Duan Go the Diviner, and they talk about, guys, we need to keep moving, even though we literally just caught everything and all these experience points for free. Jiang Tao Tao says, Keep moving, we have to keep up with Lin Mo Yu. And it seems this Alvin girl really is smart, and at least she already is a good leader for them. So I know this squad or this team is going to be really good. They are walking inside of a cave, and Ning Yi Yi always has something to say. And she says it reeks like fish all over this place. We then see it is a white house, I mean it's some sort of palace, and it looks very beautiful here guys, so let's just admire it. We also mention, and we see this sort of merfolk, and oh gosh, there seems to be a lot of them, as he has his three-headed trident. Ning Yi and Jiang Tao Tao discuss how there are a total of 60 patrol teams, and a total of 180 monsters. And on top of that, they are all enhanced elite and nightmare level. Lin Mo Yu, guys, just puts his hands up as we see the flame come up and we know what's happening. He says the more monsters, the better, as he summons more. Jiang Tao Tao says, Lin Mo Yu, wait! Although, his skeletons are very strong, isn't it too rash to just rush out like this? But then we also see the stats of the Mermaid Elite Soldier, which is Enhanced Elite. Strength 2200, Agility 1400, Spirit 1000, and its skill is Dizziness Sweep, as it seems to have been alerted just now. They use Stun Strike, but then we see the skeletons and they use Rage Strike as they press on. Ning Yi mentions, more of them are charging at us now. But then he uses, of course, we see the red ball on his hand, and it is a Rasengan, and he tell- oh, I'm just kidding, guys. But he says, to cover your ears. And then we hear, boom. Mermaid Elite Soldier killed, and there are literally like five of them that pop up on the screen. And Jiang Tao Tao and the rest of the squad are just in shock. And guys, I don't know, I'll probably have the same reaction as them. 
we see more and more and more guys look how many of these are guys it's literally just free kills as we see all of the explosions here and all of the merfolk are literally wiped away they say how is he able to do that i've never seen a skill so powerful and that's just what happens when you meet lin mo yu we then see the palace doors start to open very slowly and we see a very beautiful girl or lady Oh gosh guys, and this is a monster, my bad. This is a mermaid queen boss level monster. Her strength is 5,000, agility 6,000, spirit 5,000, constitution 6,000, and her skills are scream of sorrow, which sounds pretty terrifying, tsunami waves, and queen's lament. And guys, this mob or this lady I literally looks so enchanting. I think some of the people in the dungeon would try to raise her up and they just get literally one-shotted by her abilities. Even Ming Yi Yi says, look, she is so beautiful. But then of course, Lin Mo Yu says, this is enchantment magic, and all of them seem to have been bewitched by this. Of course, they wonder how Lin Mo Yu is alright because he uses Awaken and they're all back to their senses. Ning Yi Yi says, what the heck just happened to me? And Miao Yu says, the mermaid queen has innate enchantment magic, and we all fell for it. Fortunately, Lin Mo Yu was there to stop us. Otherwise, we might have been annihilated just now. As you see, the mermaid queen in all of her glory with a big freaking tail. And she is releasing aura from her body and she's about to attack. We then see her real form and oh gosh, she literally looks like another character out of some sort of creepy game like Coraline. She uses Scream of Sorrow and her aura turns red. Of course, Zhang Tao Tao thinks in her head like she likes to do. Given the attributes of this mermaid queen, with a normal 6 person team, it would take at least an hour to defeat her. But with Lin Mo Yu on my side, I don't know how long this would take, cause he definitely has some tricks up his sleeve, and yeah, I will have to agree with you there. She then shouts, as she mentions the power attribute of the mermaid queen is too high, and the skeletons can't hold much longer. She explains the situation, like a pack of wolves attacking a male lion. It's hard to say who will win or lose. We then see the queen and she uses her golden trident to attack the skeletons. And then we see that one of the skeleton warriors have been eliminated and it is gone just like that. Of course, Yang Tao Tao tells the healer and the diviner, Duan Gao, buff her status and get ready for battle. And she says once Lin Mo Yu's skeleton warriors can't hold on any longer, we'll take over. But Lin Mo Yu just says in an instant of course with his riz, no need and he uses curse. She's then bound by chains, but then she uses two Nami waves to attack the skeletons, as we see it right here, and this literally looks just like the Grimace Shake. Oh, sorry guys, I know that was cringe. Anyway, we see 12 skeleton warriors have been eliminated as they all fall to the ground and they are shattered. Zhang Tao Tao says, Lin Mo Yu, call back your skeletons. I will attack these. But then Lin Mo Yu just says, Arise and dominate my soldiers and it summons 87 skeleton warriors and oh gosh they're definitely shocked by this we then see all of them they're ready to attack this mermaid queen jiang tao tao miao yu and duan gao just say am i seeing things their numbers are overwhelming this is terrifying no wonder yi yi always trusted him so much but then we go back to Ning Yi Yi, and she says, As expected, he has become even stronger, and at this rate of growth, he is way stronger than what I had imagined. As we see the queen, and she has already been injured on her waist, as the skeletons just attack her, continuously. She uses Queen's Lament, and Lin Mo Yu says it's alright, because Miao Yu mentions how she cannot do it, and how her level is too low to counter the boss's skill. Lin Mo Yu says his spiritual energy is high enough so he won't be affected. And we see the queen in her last moments crying out blood and she gets sliced like she is a fruit in the game of Fruit Ninja. And shout out to you guys if you guys played that as a kid. Slayed Mermaid Queen. Experience plus 80,000. Obtain Silver Grade Weapon. Queen's Long Sword. Obtain as well Mermaid Queen Staff. Mermaid Queen's Longsword, Silver Grade Strength, plus 50, Constitution plus 50, and Warrior Skills, Power, increased by 10%, usable at level 20, and they also obtained one Mermaid Tier. Ning Yi has it in her hand, and she says, Grab the Tier of the Mermaid, that would mark Trial Mission as completed, 
as it floats in her hand. She says with this, we are a step closer to the Trung Shen Academy now. Of course, Zhang Tao Tao says, yes, if we complete a few more trial missions and level up, we will definitely be able to enter the Shuang Shen Academy. As of course, Li Yi Yi just says, Mermaid's Tear has been secured, as the rest of them mentioned. Yes, the worst one was that guy Ling Zhen, for never teaming up with him again. Lin Mo Yu says, Yi Yi, do you have a cooldown charm? And she says, yes. And she says, are you planning to do it again? We then see, of course it is the dungeon, as well as a cooldown char. And Jiang Tao Tao, Miao Yu, and Duan Dao just look back, and they are utterly shocked. They teleport outside of the rift, and somebody says, wait, they already made it out? It's only been 30 minutes. They gossip and say, I bet they couldn't even beat it, and decided to give up. And then he says, his skeletons aren't that useful after all. And he says, it looks like they were just meat shields. Of course, the guild members from, well, on Lin Yu's side say, Brothers, it's fine if we fail the dungeon, staying alive is what matters. And they say, yeah, let's just go back. Ling Zhen says, as he thinks he's an MC, still not dead yet? You insisted on bringing your party into the dungeon, and now you guys are just gonna leave. We then see Jiang Tao Tao with Ning Yi Yi, and then Ning Yi Yi says, don't worry Miss Tao, Mu Yu is with us. And of course, she also mentions to her, Yi Yi, let's proceed as planned as we see the cooldown timer thing behind them. And Ning Yi Yi says, yeah. We then see they teleport inside, and they say, wait, they are going inside again? For that lady to have a cooldown talisman, she must be very important. And then somebody says, with a very long, well, paragraph, if my eyes didn't deceive me, they chose a nightmare difficulty, right? For just two of them to enter the nightmare difficulty, isn't that literally just courting your death? Of course, Jam Tao Tao looks back and she's kind of nervous, and she says, we can only place our hopes on them now. And then Miao Yu says, Miss Taozi, we saw how strong Lin Mo Yu is, so everything will be just fine. She says as she gets a flashback, that is true, she can't believe that Lin Mo Yu can clear it on his own, even at Nightmare Difficulty, and Miao Yu concurs. They teleport inside, and Ning Yi Yi says, but don't make this the last time though, because he says, who would have thought that Lin Mo Yu would actually bring me here to grind levels now, as Lin Mo Yu just says okay, with his hands in his pocket. We then see a merfolk look at them, and Ning Yi says, the amount of times left on my cooldown artifact is enough for them to do it two times, and she says we need to take this opportunity and get more mermaid's tears into our hands. We then see the skeleton, and Lin Mo Yu says, the night is still young, let's get this dungeon over with as soon as possible, and ensure they won't be killing them as fast as I do. We then see lots of the stat notifications pop up as Ning Yi Yi just looks down and they are looking at the giant white snake. And they are just standing on the cliff and Lin Mo Yu still has his hands in his pockets guys. This guy is just too cool for us. We find out you've successfully eliminated the Mermaid Queen's pet snake at level 23. They gained 125,000 XP and they've also obtained a silver rank E equipment, the snake leather light armor. He says, it took us more than 30 minutes to get here last time, and now it's only been more than 5 minutes. He says that these 5 minutes and they've already killed the mini boss, which is very impressive. Ni Yi says, you're much stronger as I thought. And he looks back saying, let's go, it's time to proceed to the mermaid's palace, and our boy really got that riz. We arrive there as a skeleton is seen dashing towards them, and slice slice, these guys are a piece of cake. He says, we've killed all the soldiers protecting the palace, and the boss is about to appear. As we see the Mermaid Creed boss monster. Strength 5000, Agility 6k, Spiritual Energy 5k, Physique 6k, Skills, Cream of Sorrow, Tsunami Waves, and of course, the Queen's Lament. And our Queen here looks even cooler than last time, but unfortunately, she's just gonna get wrecked and one-shotted by Lin Mo Yu skeletons. Ning Yi Yi is literally hiding behind Lin Mo Yu. And she says, I'm not gonna look at her so I don't get cast into her enchantment magic. And she points as she says, Move, Lin Mo Yu, go finish her. And her boy Lin Mo Yu is smiling, guys, so I guess Ning Yi Yi really is a cool person. He uses Resistance Curse, and of course, she is bound by his red chains, like her boy is Karapika. And then he uses Corpse Explosion. And boom, she literally just dies like that, and she is burned to a crisp like some sort of pancake, and um, yeah, he didn't even use a single skeleton, so our boy is just too overpowered. You've successfully killed the Mermaid Queen and gained 200,000 XP. They got the silver rank weapon, the dagger of the Mermaid Queen, 
and they also got the Grimoire of the Mermaid Queen, as well as a mermaid's tear. Let's freaking go! We then see, it is Ning Yi Yi and she seems to have leveled up. She is super happy with a mermaid's tear in her hand, and she says let's do it one more time and get all three mermaid's tears. And Lin Mo Yu just says yeah yeah let's get it over with. Lin Mo Yu however mentions, when he just met her she was at level 19, while he was at level 10, and it's been so long yet she is still at level 19 and has just managed to level up. As she says Miss Tao Zi or T Yang Tao Tao, we are done. He mentions that it seems like this girl doesn't really like to grind levels. They are there and the people around them say, did they just get in there like a couple minutes ago? It's only been 10 minutes. They probably didn't even manage to kill a single monster, right? And it seems that they just wasted the cooldown talisman. But Ning Yi Yi just looks behind her as she's holding the cooldown talisman and gives them the tongue as she mocks them. Jiang Tao Tao says it's only been 10 minutes. No way they managed to come out that fast. And Miao Yu just says, it seems that Lin Mo Yu is way stronger than we thought. We say they are looking at their wrists for some reason, and it seems that she says, let's see how much time we are going to take, and they are literally setting up the timers. Lin Mo Yu says, she is almost treating this at a game at this point. And she says, let's go 8 minutes and 58 seconds, and they are 30 seconds in their previous run, as we see the Mermaid Queen just get disintegrated behind her, and geez, this is really just solo leveling, and of course, Ning Yi Yi is just there for fun. Then Mo Yu says, let's go back now, Ning Yi Yi. And she says, I can't wait to look at these people's faces from the other country, and I 100% agree. They come out again, and they say, it really is a waste of a precious item. They definitely use up the cooldown talisman, right? They say, what a joke, they probably decided to run away after running away from one of the monsters they couldn't defeat. Of course, Ning Yi Yi gives the okay to Jiang Tao Tao, as he asks, how did it go, Ning Yi Yi? Did you get your hands on it? And she says, yep, it's all good. We then see them on a cliff, and then we see the portal start to disappear. They all wonder, what? The dungeon is disappearing. How could this be possible? And it seems that the portal really is away, and they find out, that the dungeon will only be gone if three mermaids tears have been obtained and yes they did it three times and they got it all on each try lin mo yu says tis a test is over let's move and jiang tao tao is so serious with a mermaid's tear in her hand and she says okay we see one of the people from the other countries and he says we can't let them get away the mermaid's tears are with them so we must make them hand it over as they go to attack them and they're making a really grave mistake they start to discuss saying Jiang Tao Tao's party has all the roommates tears, that's really hard for them to believe, but the dungeon did disappear. And so they fight saying, since a party from our Shensha Empire got it, they can't let the Sakura country snatch it away from them. As we see, we see one of the dudes from earlier with the summons, and he is about to attack Lin Mo Yu. We see the shadow of his monster summon, and it has red eyes and it is pretty menacing, and it seems that both of them are about to attack Jiang Tao Tao. She looks very nervous as she is even sweating, but Lin Mo Yu says as he absorbs some of the aura outside of him, and he uses soul flame as he attacks one of the monsters, and of course it literally just gets disintegrated, and the guy with the ponytail who summoned him says die. And this guy has definitely messed up, so yeah, never mess with Lin Mo Yu. He uses Divine Summoning, and he summons, well, some more monsters. He says go get them, and this guy seems to be some sort of Cobra Knight, as he has a cool axe. We see the fire on his axe, and he's about to hit him. And of course, the summoner says, your attacks are so feeble, they're really a tickle to the my giant axe Divine Summon, but this guy is really just talking. Then Mo Yu has his skeleton summon around him, and we see them attack them, and they're in rage mode as their aura is red. We see the Furious Strike and the power is 2700. He says, wait, what? And Lin Mo Yu says, it's really that weak? And the people behind him says, wait, did he just really just kill a divine summon with just one hit? And of course the summoner coughs out blood and says, wait, not only did his summon get wiped out, but he also suffered backlash. As we see two skeletons chase after him. And of course Lin Mo Yu says, for more to go. And this guy is definitely done for. 
he calls one of his taurus or his bulls to go faster, but then they all think in their heads, his skeletons are that powerful? The Divine Summoner is a legendary class and it was killed so easily, as we see an image of Lin Mo Yu here and her boy really looks like Sung Jin Woo. They talk about what level is he and what are those skeletons, and they wonder what the heck is his class. The guy looks back and says, a level 17 necromancer, he must have awakened his innate ability or his talent, and so he must report this back because the Shensha Empire has somebody extremely strong. We then see him standing in the middle of his summons guys, and our boy really looks super super cold, and our boy really is about to smurf on this entire universe. One of the guys from the other country says, I give up, I'm not going to fight against those things, and he doesn't want to die, as he starts to run. And we see everybody else with the robe on, and they begin to run away as well, because even if the divine summoner has died, how are we going to even win? And then the other people from Lin Mo Yu's country says, look at those little craps, they literally piss their pants, and of course, they really are scared of a couple skeletons. But I think they're underestimating Lin Mo Yu's summons. They say, anyways, where did that Lin Mo Yu come from? He's a man of few words, he is ruthless, and he is a role model. As, he, as we literally just see his back like he is an MC, well he is one, and our boy really is getting that recognition. They say, yeah, he looks so cool when he single-handedly killed that divine summon, and guys, we see Ling Zen, and he's just looking at them celebrating as he says to himself, I wonder if I would have been one of the people who completed the trial if he was in their team. And yeah, you would have, but your cockiness and your pride really comes before your fall. He says, wait, it's not my fault. Lin Mo Yu, just wait, I'll make you pay by tenfolds. As Jem Tao Tao says, trial completed successfully. It's time to go back. They then go outside of the dungeon as you see the red chains holding it up. As we see, the system says, Trial successfully completed, commencing teleportation. We are back in the Hidden Dragon Academy, also known as the Shanlong Academy. And of course, they are talking as Jiang Tao Tao says, This trial was extremely important for me. Thank you so much, Lin Mo Yu. As she begins to roll her hair. And yeah, she definitely likes Lin Mo Yu. Ning Yi is on the desk tired and she says, it's finally over, I'm really tired. Wait, but did she just like do nothing that entire time? But it's whatever. She says, Miss Jiang Tao Tao, you don't have to be so formal with him. Although he doesn't talk much, he's actually a really good person. She smiles as she says, look at you, always speaking up for him. And Lin Mo Yu just has a really confused face on because yeah, Ning Yi Yi is definitely not speaking up. She is just a troll. We see beep beep and it seems that Bai Yi Wan has contacted Lin Mo Yu. It says, Lin Mo Yu, come to the Academic Affairs office for a moment. And we are in the Academic Affairs office, and we see Bai Yi Wan. And he says, I watched the trials recordings just now. You did very well. And he says, yeah, I did my best. Of course, Bai Yi Wan says to himself, wow, he's not even cocky, even though he succeeded, and he's not discouraged by failure. He then questions Lin Mo Yu if he knows what mermaid's tears are for. He says no, and he wonders if it is an extremely valuable item. He then explains, it is an item that would affect the success rate in an awakening of their innate talent during their second class transitioning at level 40. And items that can help awaken talents are very rare. Even if the level of the mermaid's tears is still relatively low, it is still very precious as we see a really cute dude here in the summoning or the magic circle. He says that this time unexpectedly, the Sakura country also calculated the time and location of the appearance of Mermaid Island, which almost led to the failure of the trial. He then explains furthermore, it was fortunate that he was able to obtain the mermaid tears for Shenxia, and he asks if there's anything that you want. Lin Mu Yu begins to ponder saying, he really couldn't find information on his sister at the information administration office, so he wonders if this is a good opportunity. He says, can you help me find somebody? Bai Yi Yuan is of course an also a Sigma male, and he says, your sister Lin Mo Han. She joined the Chang Shuan Academy at the beginning of the year, so you can't really find information because all their information is confidential. He says, Shuang Shen Academy. Jiang Tao Tao's ultimate dream is to go there. And he says, Yi Yi and Xia Shui have also told me that if there is a chance, he must join that academy. He gets a flashback to his sister or an image of her. And he wonders, he didn't really expect his sister to enter first because it only has been like half a year. Bai Yi Yuan says, 
Your sister is a part of the Shangshen Academy, so he's bound to the rules and he can't reveal anything. However, of course, he should just join the Academy, and yeah, I think this is the simplest solution to all of this mess. He then says, I have sent you the requirements for joining the Shuangsheng Academy and it'll come in handy as he types it in on his wristband. And Lin Muyu is very thankful. He also says one more thing. He was going to say what he knew about his sister's situation so he can ask for another reward. And Lin Muyu says, I would like a cool down amulet. Bai Yi Yuan says, this item can't even be bought in a trading house so it is really rare. He then tells Lin Mo Yu, fine, fine, I knew you would want this after the training or the trial, so I will give it to you. However, you need to complete this quest because it is worth more than just a trial. Lin Mo Yu says okay, and he mentions how with the cooldown talisman, he will be able to grind levels like literal games here guys, way easier. Bai Yu Yuan says, however, you have to wait until level 20 until you take this task. And if you are in a hurry, you can go to the Academy's Instance Dungeon Hall for fast leveling as he has his crystal in his hand. He puts it in his palms and says, This is the teleportation stone of the Instance Dungeon Hall. Not everybody is qualified to get it. He then uses it instantly, and Bai Yi Wan says, Wait, he's going right away? He says his eyes did not really fool him, and he must be a really good lad. He literally just came from a trial, and he wants to go into a dungeon to level up. And this guy doesn't even need rest. And for the first time guys, Lin Mo Yu is shocked by looking at the incense hall of the Xia Jing Academy. As we see some sort of purple balls spitting around on some sort of holders or ceramic. I don't really know what that is. He says Bone Burial Grounds Instant Dungeon. Normal difficulty, lacking a mage around level 25. Preferably proficient in fire skills. Some other people mention Blood Ballot Orc Legion Instant Dungeon. Nightmare difficulty, lacking a healer level 20 to 25. Required to be proficient in healing, full set of bronze grade equipment, and it seems that a lot of people are looking for comrades to enter dungeons with, and this seems like a really cool, well I think it's kind of similar to a dungeon tavern or just a dungeon guild location. And we see Lin Mo Yu as he's looking at his cool Apple Watch, and we see level above 30. It is the entrance requirement for the Shuangshen Academy, and as he looks down, he says, Does that mean after my sister arrived in Xia Jing Academy, she leveled up to 30 in just 3 or 4 months? We then see notification saying, Clear the level 30 dungeon Abyssal Frontline with the difficulty set to Hell Mode, and contribution points must reach 1000. And our boy is looking kind of nervous because of this. We then see somebody go up behind him, saying, Hey classmate, and she asks if this is the first time he's going into a dungeon hall. And this girl has blonde hair, a ponytail, and a cross in her jacket or her vest. So I'm assuming she's some sort of healer. And yeah guys, we know she is pretty cute. She then looks behind her and says, She is Shu Han, and she can introduce him to everything in the dungeon hall and everything he needs to know. And he has his hands in his pocket as he mentions that this seems like another opportunity for students to gain points as well. He then asks her how many points will suffice, and she says a hundred will do. He then transfers a hundred and she looks super happy, saying thank you, and I wonder if she just got, or he just got scammed. She then introduces him as we see these balls floating, and she says that inside the dungeon hall there are two dungeons below level 20. 18 dungeons for those between 20 and 30, and 20 between level 30 and 40. We then see these three different dungeons, and she says that in addition, there are two large scale dungeons that require more than 40 participants, but I'm pretty sure my boy Lin Mo Yu is going to solo them. He then explains that every single dungeon has its corresponding clearance record, and setting a new record will earn you a lot of rewards and will be notified across the entire hall. We see them standing in front of some sort of tree with the orbs floating, and she tells him that this is the dungeon hall's task center, as well as a hub for teaming recruitment. She says there you can complete tasks to earn points, join a team, and recruit comrades. Of course, Lin Yu is kind of skeptical and asks how do I earn contribution points, and she says, that by participating in the Academy's trials and completing tasks assigned by the Academy, that's pretty much how you get them. He then remembers in his head that the highest contribution point task at the task center only offers 10, and with most tasks only giving 2 to 3. And so, to join Shuangsheng Academy, you need a thousand, which seems kind of crazy. We then see Shu Han and she's kind of nervous saying, well, earning contribution points is kind of hard, because whenever a task is actually opened, it's definitely completed by somebody in a jiffy. 
He then looks down at his watch and he gets a notification from Duan Gao. And he says, have you gotten your contribution points? How many did you get? Because he just transferred him 50. He says, I got 20 points, hit the jackpot. And sister Paozi got 30 points and she's over the moon. The people around him say that he's bluffing, but our Lin Boyu just really got like unlimited contribution points if he levels up even a bit. He then thanks Shu Han for guiding him. And she says, you're welcome and you paid after all. She then asks him, are you planning on fighting a team for a dungeon? But then he just brings up the menu and it says 1, 58 minutes and 2, 1 hour and 17 minutes because it shows them the dungeon requirement and the cost for entering the point. And he just completely ignored Shuhan as he has his hand on this purple ball. He chooses nightmare mode and the people around are like, wait, he's just a level 20, what the heck is he doing? And then one of them even mentions, I bet he was the one who got 50 contribution points. We see we are in the mutated forest and our boy Lin Mo Yu is level 17 with 32.57% in and he's pretty close, well almost halfway to level 18. We see him with his hands in his pocket and he wonders, I wonder how much I'll level up after completing this dungeon. We see notifications of him or well his skeletons killing these mutated grey bears and he says to himself, he can leave the task of clearing minor monsters to the skeleton and he has to find the boss one as soon as possible. He then looks into a water and then there's some sort of big hole there and this is where the boss is located. It comes out and it is a mutated gel turtle and it looks like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle gone rogue. Its level is 19, strength 4000, agility 500, mentality 500, physique 7000, skills bite sweep and super defense as you see it here and it looks kind of scary guys. But while it is suspended in the air, his skeletons gather up on him and gang up on him. But then it uses super defense so their attacks just get neglected. He then puts more power into them saying, the skeleton warrior's furious strike didn't even do much. And he says sorry but I need to go pretty soon. And he uses soul flame because he'll use skills that ignore the defense. Of course he sees the turtle here and uh, GG bro. And of course it just flips over and yeah this is the end. He then uses Furious Strike or Rage Strike and we see his skeletons become bloodlusted and they jump towards the turtle. And yeah, GG to the turtle, he even lost both of his arms. We see defeated mutated Jiao Turtle, he gained 150,000 XP and he also gained a bronze class weapon, the Jiao Turtle Gauntlets, he gained the turtle heavy armor and he even gained a low level monster core. He then is absorbing everything that he got and we see that he gained over 35% on his XP bar and he wonders what the reward will be for breaking the record. The hall's bell starts to ring as we hear somebody has set a new dungeon record and they wonder which elite team has done it. We then see a really creepy well some sort of status leaderboard that shows a record and I think this looks pretty cool and it says the new record for the mutated forest number of players won level 17 necromancer Lin Mo Yu completion time 35 minutes and this is a rank 1. Everybody is shocked by this as they're looking up into the air. And by the way, these look like little colorful boba pieces, but I just don't know what they are. I'm guessing they're crystals. They say, what? A solo run? Even if it's just a level 17 low tier dungeon, he's almost twice as fast as a previous record. And he comes back looking at his watch. And he says to himself, that setting a record does give you contribution points. As you see here, he has received a thousand points normally and five contribution points awarded all at once. We then see he is ready to head back in and the people around are like, what the heck? I'm a level 30, should I go ask him to help so I can get my level up? But that they say that that's really shameless and yeah, asking help from a level 17 is just pretty, pretty embarrassing. We then see he's in the spider nest level 20 dungeon and your requirement is level 18 to 21, so our boy cannot enter it. He then walks and everybody around him is literally rizzed away and they're shocked and scared to go up to him. An hour later, he reached level 18 and the people are all amazed at how fast he is leveling up. We see a new record for the mutated forest has appeared and yes, Lin Mo Yu, a level 18 necromancer, he cleared it in 24 minutes. They all wonder, who is this guy? That record was set by a near perfect 5 player team and had stood there for 3 years. How the heck is this guy just clearing it? We see Lin Mo Yu is ready to enter the spider nest dungeon and the dungeon record is 1 hour and 12 minutes. He wonders if the spider nest's record was set by them too. He then enters it and selects nightmare mode saying, I'm sorry, 
but I need many contribution points, so it seems I'm going to be taking that record, and our boy is an absolute savage. He has his hand in his pocket as he asks, is this really the spider nest? And he mentions that it's super dark. He then puts a fire in his hand, and he starts to summon, of course, his skeletons, and I want you guys to guess how many times has he summoned his skeletons so far into this monologue. We see defeated level 20 Crimson Spider experience plus 9k, and defeated level 19 Long Haired Spider experience plus 8k. And he mentions that there's so many forks in the road, and all the skeletons are encountering enemies nearby. By the way, for forks, it means diversions or like splitting up, and that's what the translator left with us. He also wonders if all the little spiders as well are dungeon monsters, because they literally look harmless, well I think, maybe only to Lin Mo Yu. He said let's try a skill, and he uses Soul Flame, and there are notifications saying, defeated level 18 little spider, plus 500 experience, and he mentions that the experience given is equivalent to 20 enhanced elite monsters of the same level, so this is actually a bargain. We see the spiders jump on one of his summons though, but of course his physique is going down because the spiders are biting him. He then uses the return space and brings back some of the skeletons. As we see, the recall has failed and he wonders if it's because there are spiders on it. But then he just uses corpse explosion and he clears all the spiders just like that with a blink of an eye. He then dashes forward and says because this is a prime hotspot for farming experience, he definitely has to use the most of it and he can't let this go to waste. 10 minutes later, as we see he is about to fight the Spider King boss level monster, level 21, strength 5k, agility 3.5k, spirit 500, physique 4000, and skills web spitting and acid wind swirl, and wow, what a very cliche attack of web spitting. He says I finally found you, and he gives a very menacing smirk, and he wonders how much HP or how much XP he's going to get. We then see it's Shu Han outside of the nest, as she says, can he really solo and clear the spider nest? And somebody even folds his arm saying, yeah, that is known as a holy ground for ranking up experience, so that guy is as good as dead. We see now he is level 18 and he is 81% there, and he mentioned that after clearing it once, the experience increased by 80%, and so, after defeating the spider king, he gained 190,000 experience and he also gained 4 silver ranked weapons and a spider dagger. Shu Han wonders if he just died, but then, while he's pouting, we see Lin Mo Yu come out of nowhere, and she says, you're finally out, did you clear the dungeon? She then says nervously, and she doesn't really know what to say, she said it's okay if you didn't clear it. The monsters are really scary, and it's pretty much impossible for one person to clear. But our boy Lin Mo Yu says, yeah, I appreciate your concern, but I literally just soloed it just now. She says, he actually pulled it off, all by himself, there's no way that he set a new record when it was previously held by a 5 person team. She looks at him guys and yup, she is definitely rizzed up and she fell for him, and she says, he looks so relaxed, it seems that this isn't even his limit. Lin Mo Yu asks if you know which dungeons give more experience, and she says for those under level 25, the spider nest definitely provides the most, and the spider from the spider nest is almost 3 times that of the forest he cleared previously. We see that he has cooldown removal 40 points, and he mentions but clearing it this way, offsetting the cooldown consumes a lot of points. He then asks Shu Han, is there a dungeon that's fast to clear and also offers high experience? And she says yes, there is one. You can try forming a team with others to challenge the Tyrant Desert, and it is a large dungeon. She explains as we see an image of it behind her, and it seems pretty sandy. She mentions that because it is literally Giga Chad or ginormous, you are allowed to have a 40 person team, and players at level 20 can enter, and many high level players earn points by carrying newbies through it. And Lin Mo Yu mentions, I wonder if it can be soloed, because it is a large dungeon, and her boy Lin Mo Yu really is just too crazy. He says thank you as he looks away, and walks away, and I'm pretty sure he's headed towards that dungeon right now to get level 20, and of course Shu Han is just shocked by this. He smiles, saying I'll take your experience, as we see he enters a spider nest again, with all the spiders looking at him, ready to devour him. But um, yeah, that's not happening. We then see Bai Yi Yuan, and they're looking at him, along with some other fellow teachers or instructors on the big screen. And then he mentions, even though I had met him previously, I was still taken aback 
after watching this battle. We see an old dude literally rubbing his beard and his name is Meng An Wen. And he mentioned he sold the mermaid dungeon and obtained all three tiers of the mermaid, huh? He says those expressions from Country Y were extremely fascinating. And beside him is a cool looking dude like he's an also a former anime protagonist and his name is Hong Shan, the dean of the Hidden Dragon Academy. Of course, Bai Yi Wan says, in reply, it's an amplification talent. I didn't ask how many times it multiplies though, because that's his personal secret and matter. Bai Yi Wan then finishes the drink in his cup and mentions, he thinks that he has a promising future because his sister has already joined the Chuang Shen Academy. We see the both of them here and they actually look very very similar and his sister looks pretty cool. He says that his sister is also favored by the old man who is nurturing her and I wonder who could that be? And Bai also says that he might also be taken under that old man's wing. He then explains that it seems that our human race will have soon two stars rising and the guy to his left mentions, in my opinion, that young man in the future might become a formidable presence, able to go against thousands at once. As you see, his skeletons dashing into battle against the spiders and he's on top of the hill, just commanding them from there. He gives a really wide grin, saying, this time I'll not only kill all the spiders, I'll gain a bit less experience, but of course, he still earned a lot because of the boost in experience, and he mentions that the completion time has sped up, and that he'll clear the record for this dungeon, and yeah, this is just another ordinary day for our boy Lin Mo Yu. Everybody in the hall are saying, wait, it must be that student Lin Mo Yu again, because we hear that the bell has rung once again, meaning the record has been broken. And Ling Zen just says, what's with your nonsense about having a powerful class, that boy Lin Mo Yu just got fortunate. And he gives a thumbs down saying, he's just from a regular academy, and he got some connection to Bai Shen, and yeah, this guy is definitely jealous. But then, Shu Han yells, what's wrong being from a regular academy? Why can somebody from a regular academy set the record? And then one of the other guys below him says, hey I recognize you, you're from the Hidden Dragon Academy. Do you really think your academy is superior? As we see, Lin Mo Yu is coming out and our boy literally plays with his hair and he thinks he's Gojo. Anyway, we see the tombstone or the floating hologram behind him and it says new record for spider nest dungeon. Number of players won, level 19 necromancer Lin Mo Yu, it took him 47 minutes. And of course, he is the number one ranker and he got a thousand points and five contribution points. Everybody says, hey, great one, somebody is flattering you. And then Lin Mo Yu just looks at Ling Zen and he says, it's you again, huh? And Ling Zen says, stop showing off, Lin Mo Yu. I know it's because Bai is backing you up. But of course, Lin Mo Yu gives a very scary look and says, I've tolerated you enough times. And of course, it's not convenient to make a move within the academy. And our boy Ling Zen is literally shocked to his core. And he says to himself, his eyes, has he killed somebody before? Why the heck do I feel so scared? And he says it must be an illusion. And Lin Mo Yu has reached level 19 and is at 74%. And he mentions that he needs to level up to level 20 before the day ends. And yeah, Ling Zen, you definitely should not mess with the strongest necromancer and the only necromancer of all time. We see Lin Mo Yu as he has his head in the air with his aura going out of it. And he says after this grind, he can finally level up. We see a very beautiful orange bright aura and of course it says that he has leveled up and he has reached level 20. He remembered how before he accept Bai Shen's task, he wants to take a look at the changes after leveling up. We see his occupation is still necromancer as usual, but he has a strong increase in all of his attributes. We also notice that he has a 200 space capacity in his summoning space as well and he uses 500 spirit to summon something up. We then see it is a silver level skeleton warrior compared to the black iron one he summoned before and he mentions that attributes are comprehensively enhanced and almost a single one can compete with a boss in a dungeon. He then begins to ponder saying, summoning skeletons consumes too much and it's so it's time to get some new gear. He then walks out of the dungeon and everybody is like, wait, it's that expert again. No way, he worked from level 17 to level 20, this guy must be cheating. We see Lin Mo Yu at the counter and he says, can you help me sell this for some gold as well as some beginner skill scrolls? And the clerk is like, hold on, how did this level 20 get this good of unequipment? 
The man takes it and says, all right, all right, but don't you need these equipment for yourself? So why even sell it? But then he mentions that he does need new equipment, but ordinary silver gear is of no use. As we see something drops, and he picks it up and gives it back to him, and saying, no worries, we also have a point store here, and all the real good stuff is here, as he says nervously. He then guides him into the room as we see things enclosed in these glass boxes, as we see a spiritual longsword, a silver level for 400 spirit, and the craftsman is Zantai, and it is one of the three spiritual item set, and it is 3000 points. Lin Mo Yu then mentions, hmm, it seems that the equipment here is even better in this sex, and so it's time to cop some. He also sees a spiritual robe and spiritual ring, and he mentions how these effects can provide an additional 800 spirit. He then looks, and something catches his eye. It is a scythe, and oh yes guys, this is going to be his signature weapon. It is 50,000 points as we see it here, and he mentions that with this price, he's pretty sure that not a lot of people at the academy can purchase it. This is Danathus' scythe, a growth type weapon usable for level 10 and above, and it is one of the necromancer set. It has Reaper, and when Danathus' scythe absorbs the skull of an abyssal demon, it gains experience and grows. It has Undying, and it has Hero General Formation, but of course, the others are locked, and they can be unlocked with upgrades. He mentions how this is one of the Necromancer set item, and guys, this looks super freaking cool, and I know our boy Lin Mo Yu is gonna look super good while he's wielding this, just commanding his summons. He mentions that his skeleton warriors could indeed use a leader, and so he buys it. We then see a sort of monster call out behind him, and I'm guessing this is his aura. And then he mentions that even though it has no attributes, in others' eyes, it is pure trash. But it can even absorb the souls of abyssal demons. So he gives a smile saying that this is a perfect weapon to him. He is about to purchase the items as a clerk says. Do you know how many points it costs? Did you read it wrong? But Lin Mo Yu just gives him his special card. And yes guys, the clerk is absolutely shocked to see that he has 130,000 points. And he mentions that the scythe that has been there has been longer than he has been working there, as Lin Mo Yu has it in his left hand, holding it, and her boy just walks away like an absolute Sigma male. The clerk then says he never imagined that somebody would ever choose it, because I'm guessing Necromancer class is such a really rare one, especially for Lin Mo Yu, his is an ultimate Necromancer class. He has it in his hand and it's floating along with some beginner level scrolls and he mentions that he doesn't have the opportunity to seek abyssal demons so he has to awaken the weapon using some scrolls. We then see the scroll begins to disappear as well as our boy Lin Mo Yu focusing for a successful pull. He has acquired skeleton armor and of course the summon skeletal armor providing 100 points of physique based defense and increasing resistance to elemental attacks by 10% but it only lasts 5 minutes and it can also be used for others. He mentions that this is finally a great skill that can help with his weaknesses, which I think is just gonna make our boy even stronger. He then looks at his hand as something starts to form. As we see, I think that he has a new summit. He then points towards the ground and says come out. And yes, it is a black iron tier skeletal mage guys. Although his stats are weak, our boy is literally able to damage a target with his fire element and the attack power is determined by Lin Mo Yu's spirit. He mentions that this way, his skeletons will have a ranged attack. And yes, this is just another reason why Lin Mo Yu is going to get even stronger. We see Lin Mo Yu as he is talking while Bai Yu is across from him, and Bai Yu asks him what is up. He mentions how he has reached level 20, and our boy, or Mr. Bai, is just shocked by this. He mentions how his speed is even faster than Lord Bai back when he was in his prime. He gives a smile, saying, well, both of these siblings are monsters, and he tells Lin Mo Yu the mission is simple, just go and fetch something for me. He says, that since you went to the dungeon hall, you must know about a large-scale dungeon called the Tyrant Desert. He says you need to retrieve the Tyrant's heart, as we see it here and it looks very beautiful as it is glistening with gold, and gosh, this is super shiny. He mentions as a 40-player large-scale dungeon, I won't mention the difficulty, and you should be aware, and Lord Bai mentions, three days. As long as you bring it back here, I'll get you that cooldown amulet. And of course, he says that the cooldown amulet is way beyond that of what the dungeon hall can compare to. And so, it can even go back for the top level dungeons of that month. And Lord Bai tells him, and even if you complete the mission, I'll tell you how to upgrade the cooldown amulet. And Lin Mo Yu is shocked to know that you can actually upgrade these. 
Of course. Lin Mo Yu says, I'll bring this back as soon as possible. And Lord Bai says, the reason I only gave you three days is because in those three days, an opening ceremony will be held. Lin Mo Yu leaves as an old man, of course, enters a room. And this is no one other than Meng Anwen. And he asks, are you really satisfied with Lin Mo Yu? Lord Bai says very cheerfully with his arms folded, you know what, the more I look at him, the more I am satisfied with who he is because he's super calm and collected and it's kind of contrary to who Lord Bai was. Lord Anwen then tells him, I remember when you went in at level 30 back then and you came out in a sorry state and Lord Bai is just there sweating, saying, well, Lin Mo Yu is way stronger than me. As you see an image of Lin Mo Yu walking away to the sunset and gosh, our boy just continues to keep being cool. And I cannot wait to see what his scythe is going to do on the battlefield. We see he has his hand on the orb again, and everybody mentions that's a large scale dungeon. There is no way in heck that he's going to try and set a record for it. We then see it is the Tyrant Desert, Dragon Soaring Academy, 40 players, 16 hours, 45 minutes, and 18 seconds. And that is the record. Of course, Shu Han is there and she says, Junior Lin Mo Yu, what are you doing here? He greets her, and of course, Shu Han is just shocked by this. And she says, Aren't you looking at the Tyrant Desert? After clearing so many dungeons yesterday, this guy should really go take a break. Is he crazy? But Lin Mo Yu couldn't be bothered in the slightest. He then tells her, Well, there's an item in the dungeon that I need, which is the Tyrant's Heart, and I need to acquire it. And she mentions, Wait a second. That's what drops when the boss is killed. Do you really expect to get it? She even says, you can craft an incredibly powerful box accessory which is a tyrant necklace. And with that, it only drops once a year as well. And so, the last time the tyrant's heart was appeared was two years ago, so this is super rare. As you see the pendant, and yeah, this looks incredibly rare to me. She then mentions, you don't think you're challenging the tyrant desert alone, are you? And she says, this dude really just hit level 20 and he doesn't even have any teammates. She covers her mouth like, no way. You're going to solo it? And yeah, she just figured it out now and um, yeah, I'm just as surprised as you are, Shu Han. Anyway, she tells Junior Lin as she looks at him, You are going on a suicide mission. But then somebody walks up behind them and she says it's them. And they are from the Baili Academy and they wanted for a long time to break the Tyrant Desert record. We see this guy with white hair and we see something covering his mouth with four hordes on it. And this looks pretty scary guys, but this dude looks absolutely huge, and his type of armor is a gold level equipment. Of course he looks back towards his soldiers or his comrades, and mentions that this time, their academy shall set the record. He mentions, if this messes up, he's going to get pissed, and he wonders if the two people, which is Lin Mo Yu and Shu Han beside them, are also planning to clear it as well. Lin Mo Yu goes up the steps slowly, and then they're all wondering, wait, has anybody even soloed a large scale dungeon before? This guy is on a suicide mission. But the old man from Baili Academy, or I think this guy's pretty young, but he just looks old because of his white hair. He just says, he's going into the tyrant desert by himself, huh? Where did this rookie come from? Did nobody tell him it's a large scale dungeon? The people around say, don't mind that fool because we got this. We are in the tyrant level dungeon or the tyrant desert dungeon. And oh gosh, I got blinded by this by reading it at like 3 a.m. He launches out his zombies, and he mentions that it seems like he'll have to explore the dungeon map on his own. He begins to ponder as he thinks of the directions that his skeletons should be scattered up, and he mentions how looking at it, his remaining 80,000 points won't last long. And finally, he encountered a monster. We see, the Desert Ghost Tree is a super enhanced elite monster, Level 25, Strength 5000, Agility 1k, Spirit 2k, Physique 6k, and it has a Death Bind skill. One of his soldiers falls on it, and he mentions that even just an ordinary small monster has stats comparable to a level 24 in the Mermaid Dungeon, so this is going to be quite hard. But Slash, one of his skeletons just kills a level 25 Desert Ghost Tree, and he gets 3000 experience, and he mentions that the experience that he gained is at the same as a boss level. He then uses skeletal armor and mentions that because dungeon lurks in the dunes, it's better to stay safe. As we see, it is a huge vast land and he has three of his goons or his summons just there beside him. He then stumbles upon an oasis and he mentions how because of this, he is sure that nearby monsters will gather around. 
And as we expected, we see it is an Oasis Giant Scorpion, which is purple and kind of cool looking. And it jumps towards him and he mentions that this is not a good thing to just approach recklessly. We see one of the skeletons uses Rampage Strike and even the translator mentioned that they keep changing it from Rampage to Rage Strike and it's just a fun thing to do, which I kind of appreciate. We see a skeleton slash up the Oasis Giant Scorpion and yeah, GG to those scorpions and um, I was gonna say they're gonna turn into food but I don't think we eat scorpions here. Anyways, he mentions that there is a fruit on a tree and he wonders if it is produced by the dungeon. He then has a fire in his hand and says go pick that fruit for me and he wonders if that can help him collect these fruits. One of those skeletons then puts one on his head and offers it to Lin Mo Yu, and he wonders what these fruits have. It is a desert oasis fruit. It can rapidly restore a large amount of spiritual power, but it must be consumed within 5 minutes and it can't be saved into your inventory. And so Lin Mo Yu just chomps at it and it looks like a little mini watermelon, and we see that his spiritual power is just rapidly recovering. More skeletons come as we see the watermelons or whatever the spiritual fruit is on top of these palm trees. He gives a smile saying, come for a skeleton mage. And he mentions how this is good for practicing skills and leveling them up. He says that he was just wondering how to level up these mage summoning skills. And it seems that this is the perfect chance as we see the mage here in all of its coolness. He mentions that as long as his skill reaches level 20, the mage can even become a silver tier which will be a huge addition. And guess what? Our boy is just here eating those fruits guys and he's just watching from afar like he's watching a movie. We see his summon skeleton mage has reached level 20 that quickly. As we see it is now a silver tier and yash guys it looks way way cooler. I mean just look at this there's even like floating crystals or diamonds on his robe and armor. It has explosive flames, thunderstorm and tornado skills. And he smiles with it beside him, saying, You had fun killing my skeletons, but now it's time for me to return this favor. And uh, guys, uh, let's just say rest in peace to the scorpions. Yeah, goodbye. We see one of his skeletons with fire around him and one of his skeletons with ice. One has a tornado and was has a lightning. And I am so hyped to see what our boy Lin Mo Yu is going to do with these mages. We see there are four of his mages using a tornado skill and one using a fire skill. And somehow they um, just get electrocuted and Lin Mo Yu just has a fruit in his hand. This guy must love this fruit. And he mentions that this is how a dungeon, a large dungeon, should be. He's surprised because um, there's no more of them. And he mentions it would be always good if there was always that many monsters because the skeleton mages really need to level up. As you see the oasis here on a sun setting in the dungeon and I think it's a pretty cool panel. But then something comes up behind him and he has his scythe out and he summons skeleton armor because another horde of tarantulas come behind him. Oh sorry it was actually ants but they are level 26 ants. He manages to land somewhere and he wonders if this is the ants nest. We then see we also see a flying desert ant level 27 with a strength of 6k which this means that our boy might be in a predicament. He mentions how flying ants are considered the personal troops of the queen ant, so he wonders if the boss ant is there. His skeleton armor prevents the ant from hurting him, and he says you're bullying me huh, just because my skeleton armor isn't leveled up? And so he brings out one of his mages that uses tornado, and the ants are sent flying. He is standing on top of a cliff, and he says come out my soldiers. And now, he wants them to look for where the queen ant is. As you see, his mages just wipe off all of these other bugs or these ants. And he finally located her, the queen ant, and her size on the map is pretty huge. We see, she is a desert queen ant, the leader level monster, with a level 29, and her strength is 9000, and she can summon ants, sonic wave attacks, storm strike, and curl. We also see that our personal army is of level 27, which is pretty cool. As we see Lin Mo Yu with his skeleton army ready to mess these dudes up. He says how boring. He thought that this would be a challenging boss. And just as he says that, they launch a sort of dust storm towards them and he covers his face. Saying, that's the same grade as my soldiers, this attack. He says, thank god that I have the skeleton armor. He then says, mages, stall the queen's army and he tells the ground troops to go for the kill. We see that of course the queen uses hardened shell to protect herself, and then she uses sonic wave attack, 
and some of Linmo Yu's summons are completely obliterated. She summons more ants, and Linmo Yu says this is a waste of time, and he says, Revive my warriors. He looks behind him, and he says, Wait, those summon ants. He says, Because it's like that, it looks like you're all going to die now. He uses corpse explosion, and the cocoon is, well, completely gone. He gets 800,000 experience, he obtained a silver grade weapon, the Queen Ant Spear, the Queen Ant Ring, and the Queen Ant Egg. And we also find out that it can be incubated by a Beast Tamer, and he can even get the Queen Ant. And I know that's going to be an extraordinary summit. We see he is at level 20, 78% still, as he has the egg in his hand. He mentions that with this, his experience has gone up significantly. He says now it's time to farm experience again, and it's time to head and do the Tyrant's Heart. We see the skeleton slash away as well as it kills some centipedes too. As we see, he is ready to confront these villains. We see it is the Lion Tyrant, the world level leader. He is a beautiful white color with a majestic mane. And he has some sort of halo on top of him. He is sitting on his gold throne with his head on his hand, kneeling on one of the armrests. While the rest of the lions are bowing down to him. And I think this is going to be a fight for us to remember. Hey guys, we have reached the end of the video. Make sure to comment down Necromancer if you made it all the way here. And if you guys want to watch another recap, here's one I strongly recommend. And thank you guys again for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next recap.